don't know why that takes so long. I, I feel like I feel like I don't know. It's just me. It feels like it's longer every time. Right? Yeah. waiting for the title okay. card. <laughs> okay. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Mac Flash Five, uh, the show where we like to get together and list our top five movies fitting a certain topic. My name is Matthew. With me, of course, is I can master this. A B, <laughs> Mike, and Scott. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, and today we're going to talk about, like the title says, move. It says a uh, movie slash TV adaptations. Now, what that means is we're going to list, list movies that were based on a TV show, and vice versa. So, movies like The Untouchables, starring Sean Connery, was based on the TV show The Untouchables. Or the movie. That's on my list. No, I was going to say, are you going to just say all our lists? Keep going. <laughs> or, or the Avengers, the old British <laughs> Avengers, starring Sean Connery, was based on the TV show The Avengers. And then we're also going to do uh, TV shows based on a movie, like Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, starring Sean Connery and Young Indiana Jones Chronicles. <laughs> Please tell me that's on somebody's list. Oh, I, I, just wanted, I actually love that show. It's a great show. Uh, yeah. It's only not team. on my list because I want to mention in the beginning here because Sean Connery recently passed away. This is our first episode that we've gotten to record since then. And uh, I just want to bring his name up a couple times. <clears throat> but uh, seriously, we're going to do exactly that. TV shows and movies based flip-flopping with each other. Uh, when we decide on a topic... We go our separate ways and uh, make up our list of our top five. Now, normally, or more recently, we've been doing, uh, we were, we would discuss our top three and have two honorable mentions. In this episode, we're going to talk about all five items on our list, but they're going to go back and forth. Five, four, three, two, one, but five will be a movie based on a show, right? Mm -hmm. Four will be a show based on a movie. Three will be a movie based on a show, show based on a movie, and then finally... And then amusement park ride based on a show. <laughs> right. Is that... No, amusement uh, park rides based on a show. Is based that a on, thing? I don't know. Oh, based on a movie? <laughs> I'm like, man, there's a few good ones. <laughs> um, you get the idea, though. Uh, Mike's going to start us off. Today. I was just thinking of coupon the the ride. Oh, coupon God. the movie The Ride yes. from Mr. Show. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was thinking of there. Um, yeah, okay, I'll start us off here. Um, this is, I thought this was kind of an interesting topic because really when you think of this, a lot of people tend to sort of badmouth because uh, there's so many sort of bad versions of this, you know, bad movies that came from shows and vice versa, shows that just like shouldn't have been made you know, into a show even though the movie was good. So I thought it was it'd be cool to feature some that at least we thought were were pretty decent. So I don't know if this is one was on anyone's radar. I'm going to start off with something that um, coming coming out of the MTV world. I don't know that I would have ever thought that this would occur. I suppose there's a couple things I could do here. So you're probably on the edge of your seat right now. But I'm going to go with um, a series that only ran for a couple of years. Um, and it was uh, about a, a bunch of, well, let's call them idiots who uh, like to get into yeah, a whole yeah, I knew it. I knew it. bunch <laughs> of trouble. And uh, essentially, just uh, caught, wreak havoc um, on the world. And um, I was kind of torn here. So this is for my movie, of course, Jackass. Um, I was kind of torn here of how to do this because um, the show ran for a couple years. They made three movies. There's actually an, another one coming out next year. In case, believe it or not, I don't know if you guys knew that or not. I did. Yeah. Um, but um, they all sort of are the same. Like, and, I, and usually that's a bad thing, you know. Like, oh, it's just the same thing over. And over. But when it comes to these movies, I, I just love it because, yeah, it's the same idiots doing the same stunts, you know, you know, farting on each other and doing all this weird stuff. But um, but every time I watch it, like, I can't not laugh hysterically. And Andrew and I have talked about this many a time, the one scene, uh, and it's actually in Jackass 2. So I was torn between 3D, Jackass 3D and Jackass 2. I actually thought um, this scene was in the 3D one, but it's not. It's in number two where they're in the hotel hallway and, and they have the love <laughs> letter on the wall and they convince the, each other, like just one at a time to go read the letter and it gets smaller and smaller and it's like a fan's love letter and they get closer and then Johnny Knoxville hits a button and a boxing glove punches them in the face and it's just silly, goofy stuff like that. Um, and, and that's just, I don't know. I can't 
I rewatched a couple of them the other night and I was laughing out loud, knowing full well what was coming. And, and so I have a little clip here. I, I wasn't going to do a lot of clips, but I have a little clip here. So I'm just going to cue it up um, and no sound or anything, but just an example of one of these goofy little scenes. So I'll, I'll set this. <laughs> <laughs> I'll set the stage here. Andrew's already laughing. This is just a short little clip. This is actually from number three. It's very similar to the thing I was I just explaining. I think it's the opening, the opening to number three. It's one of the opening scenes in yeah, number yeah. three. And uh, very similar to the scene I was describing, but uh, with a different prop. And I think Bam's the one coming in. So I'm just going <laughs> just gonna, to gonna play it here. And Bam's just coming in with his lunch. No, and, I think uh, is it a soup or something? He's no, no, that was a different guy. He's oh. coming in with his lunch. And Knoxville just lights him <laughs> up with bags of flour, and he calls it antiquing. <laughs> so just, just destroyed him. And I mean, again, goofy, silly stuff. I had these on the other day, and my wife was my wife was just like, "What? Is, what? Is, what? Is, what is, I can't watch this." And so she left the room. <laughs> and I just said, "Okay, I, it's fine. I, I accept that." But um, so that is my. I guess that's my number three, if you will, of. Uh, TV shows uh, made into movies. Um, there's so many segments I could list, but I'm not going to do that. If I don't know if Andrew has anything to add there, but uh, I don't. I mean, I think we saw it a couple times in the theater mm. uh, with the guys, and I don't think I've laughed mm. harder than I did in three watching three in the theater when the in the 3D. Yeah. And like literally, I couldn't breathe, and like tear like tears are flowing down my face because I was laughing so hard. And uh, it, it was it was just a good time. Like it's yeah. Yeah, obviously obviously it's like super lowbrow shenanigans, right? Yeah. But like yeah. you just turn your brain off, watch these guys be a bunch of idiots for a couple hours, and it's it's a good time. But I, uh, I mean I mean there's there's segments I can't stand. There's parts I fast forward. I don't like it when they dress up in the old people makeup and it's, yeah, it's, yeah yeah. But there's just certain things, and it's just you you know you think of when you were a kid doing dumb things. Like, and just like, I, I don't know, like, I don't know if you remember the one scene, it's a train, it's the train table. And the that, I was just going to, I literally just thinking yeah, about that. The, and that's one of my favorite segments. The close up, his butt, is, his butt. Yeah, Dave England's got his, his butt in there and it's a close up and you don't realize it's the mountains are his butt. And then all of a it's sudden painted, his butt is painted <laughs> green and, he, and it's just, yeah, he's just crapping and it's just like a volcano crap. He's upside down under the table. <laughs> Anyways, just ridiculous. All stuff. right. Yep. Next. Um, <laughs> Jackass was a show I watched. Yeah, um, yeah. pretty often. I haven't Jackass seen any of the movies. Indeed, a show. That's yeah. where I end it. Period for me. It yeah. was a show. It's not highbrow enough for Scott. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not. And you know what's funny about it too? Like I have the the whole set of the show, and it's not very long. Like there weren't that many episodes. You no. think of it at having this long run and whatever. It's what like the had, movies had, had a longer too. run. It had um, spin-off shows too because he had Bam Bam had his yeah, own show. Yeah, but I don't and consider then, uh, them... Wild Boys. There's yeah. Wild I quite Boys like with yeah. Party Boy. Yeah. I do like Chris Pontius. Chris oh Pontius is my guy. I'm Chris Pontius, Chris Pontius, Pontius is, my guy. is my guy. I like, like Party Boy and nothing else. Like literally, <laughs> like people people give it's funny because people are like, Steve O is the craziest. Steve O does the craziest stuff. Chris Pontius is fearless, man. <laughs> that guy, he does anything without yeah. even like Chris, Steve O will be like, oh, uh, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Peter Pontius is like, do, 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 do. Let me go do this thing. <laughs> he'll, will like, do. he'll do it with a smile. I'm like, Chris Pontius is this. Yeah. this Steve O will do the grossest stuff. Yeah. yeah. Pontius will do things yeah, like wear a list. sock. He'll wear a sock on his junk and have a snake bite it. Well, that That's and the, the alligator too. We had hang a, like yeah. a carcass out of his butt, and the alligator would come and try and bite it. Yeah, but Chris Pontius is a madman. Can we Love say? Him. And I want everyone who watches this to look this up because I'm glad Scott brought that up. As I'm watching this, and I watched these before knowing, you know, Mister Mac Flash himself, Francois, <laughs> um, put, get their photos, put them side by side. They are the same man. I'm convinced. Pontius and him is Francois. Pontius. Yes, oh, that's yes. Funny. <laughs> yes. That they funny. are the same man. Just, okay. Oh Anyways, man, yeah. Scott, what you got? <laughs> it is fun. Okay, so uh, I wanted to limit my three to like shows that I had watched or shows that I at least while wow, watched the concept and and knew enough. And it is funny you picked Jackass for three because it's ultimately it's at its core a show of bros being bros and broing out and doing I know, stuff I know it's going. that you can uh -huh. exactly like you said enjoy and turn your brain off and it's not my cup of tea just like i know my number three is not your cup of tea and i'm always guilty of picking like movies that are relatively bad but i look and go if i'm not going to pick it for this list 
when am I going to pick <laughs> the true. Entourage movie? <laughs> it's true. Now, Entourage is, is my favorite show. It's between that and West Wing. And if I'm feeling highbrow, if I'm feeling lowbrow, but again, Entourage to me is a 10 out of 10 show. I've seen that beginning to end at least half a dozen times. Now, the Entourage... Entourage is a show that has quite the bell curve. It starts, it goes, it hits its peak in two, three, and four, and it comes down. Season six, I all I think about season six Entourage when it turns into a hardcore drama and Vince gets a drug addiction and everyone hates each other and they separate. Ari gets a divorce. It's an insane twist and in show. Shows its maturity at the time. A lot of people think it's just a frat show. Season one and two very much were. Three on, it has a lot and says a lot and it's very like aware of the climate of Hollywood. And it's a very interesting watch for movie fans. It's not just a, a like a dumb bro show. And then season seven kind of ties it back together. So then you hear that they're doing the Entourage movie in 2015, I believe. And I remember like my best friend V and I have watched it a countless times. We quote, we, we reference, uh, we're like, it's probably going to suck, but we're going to be there. We're going to see it. And again, it was such a fun, special, like I had waited for him. He came down from Toronto and we watched it. It's an okay movie a trillion cameos in it uh billy bob thornton plays this weird with Haley jaws and his son play like this insane producer father son team uh vince wants to direct like i said there's nothing subsequent like meat on the bone of the entourage movie but for being a really nice send-off off of my favorite show and it's a movie that I can just turn on on like a summer day and be like, this is fun. These are good looking people. These, these are celebrities like lampooning themselves. Uh, it's a harmless watch. So again, I will always rewatch the Entourage show and I'm happy I have the Entourage movie as the exclamation mark of that. So again, Entourage the movie, my number three. So was that a um, like uh, an extension of the show? It was like a big so long Pixar, finale? Yeah, basically. so like the cra- so it's basically just in essence, it's nothing special. It's mm. like what four episodes of a next season would have been. Okay. Because it picks yep. up. So season seven kind of okay. caps everything off. Vince gets married to Alice Eve. They go off. And the episode immediately begins like seven days later and he's divorced. So you're so like, this, oh, okay. So this is like Saved by the Bell's Hawaiian vacation, basically. Yeah. And then it just <laughs> picks up. He's divorced. They're like, oh, it didn't work out. We hated each other. And then he comes back <laughs> and he's like, days. I'll direct my next movie. And then that's it. And then he's just like, I want to direct. I don't know anything about directing this. And then ultimately the movie ends. It wins a ton of Golden Globes. It's shot at the Golden Globes. I remember when they shot it at the Golden Globes. And I was like, oh, this is going to be at the movie next year. And the ending of the movie takes place. And Clooney, Wahlberg, they're all in it. It's super cool. But uh, I, uh, yeah, it's very much, like I said, the, it would be what for a four script episode season would be for the movie. Cool. Yeah. I mean, I have not watched I didn't the show or the yeah. movie. <laughs> and it's not that great. It's not great. It's Same. fun. I've seen it a bunch. I love that it's on your list, gonna... but you keep saying, it's all right. It's, okay. it's not that great. <laughs> no, I get, I get it. No. Like, I, I definitely is understand not on my list, it. I, like, but I, it will come I, up later. Yeah. I have just no, I, watched I knew, I knew. I, I had a feeling it would be on your list because I know you love the show. I'm so. never going to put it on another list. And as soon as yeah, we're talking about it, it gives me a chance to talk about my favorite show of all time, which I think, and I just want to say one thing. I think a lot of people sleep on it. Season six is a hardcore drama that they do a lot of interesting things. Like the show has a lot of weight and like carries like a lot of good themes. Um, It's a really underrated show. Like Jeremy Piven won like three or four Emmys on it and he does some incredible work on it. So I will say that my favorite show. Well, Entourage, my not favorite movie, the Entourage movie. (laughs) (laughs) Um, continuing in that kind of a fashion, my number three, as far as movies are concerned, is like that. It's the continuation of a TV show. I almost, know exactly you know, like where the it is. To it. Saved by the Bell Hawaiian? <laughs> I thought of it, but I don't know. I don't know no, 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 I know what it is. My number be. three is Serenity. Yes. Continuing off the TV <sighs> show, the short lived TV show, Firefly. Yeah. Um, I first saw the Serenity trailer. In the movie theater, it was it was in front of a movie I went to go see, and I was like, "Oh, I recognize some of these people. What what, what is this?" And didn't think about it at all. For I didn't see it in theaters because I never saw the show. Mm. <clears throat> um, just before the movie hit theaters, my sister said, "Oh, that's based on this TV show, Firefly. It's on DVD now. I'll get you the DVDs." 
um, she was working at a rental store. So she got them, brought them home. And I was like, you know what? I'm probably not going to watch this. And I didn't, they sat on the table and then she had to bring back to work. And I, from there, I don't know how I got my hands on a copy of the DV of the, of the DVD of the show DVD box set. I went to a store, bought them. I must've been sleepwalking or something, <laughs> but they ended up in my house and I put them on and I was, um, I think somebody had separated the show from the movie. Cause I watched the show and I was like, Oh, this is great. This is a Western in space. This is amazing. This is this guy's, you know, Han Solo like the ship is millennium Falcon ish. I'm having a great time watching this show. And then I think later a commercial for the serenity coming out on DVD came on. I was like, Oh, and I put the back, put the equation back together. It's like, there's a movie after this. Excellent. So I went and got the DVD threw that on and was enjoying myself thoroughly. Cause I love when, uh, TV shows go to the big screen and they get that film budget. Look, it looks a, awesome. It looks terrific. Yeah. yeah. And this, the continuation of the story was great. And not all of the characters are there at the beginning. And, uh, later on you get to see, uh, what uh, book has been up to. He's a, a missionary on another planet, hanging out with uh, helping out some uh, people out. Um, but it all came down and it uh, gave you a quick backstory of uh, Simon and river, which was uh, the Tam siblings and uh, how he helped her escape from the uh, hospital that uh, they've been uh, keeping her and doing experiments on her because she's psychic. And you get to see her, uh, powers expand she's clearly you know far more powerful than she was on the show and then <clears throat> it becomes you know kind of solving a mystery they head off to a planet they've never heard of and discover the origin story of the reavers which was like a zombie type uh, alien race that's been uh terrorizing getting closer and closer to civilized space and uh essentially they're cannibals what was the what was the Zombie alien cannibals. <laughs> yeah. Um, there was a line, I think, in the TV show where they said uh, first – or no, no, no. They said they'll peel our skin off. No, no, no. They said they'll rape us, peel our skin off, and then kill us. And if we're really lucky, they'll do it in that order. No, they'll kill us, peel our skin off, and rape us. And if we're lucky, they'll do it in that order. Yeah, yeah. Please, <laughs> please make that a question on the cookie label. <laughs> what um, order do we hope that? Yeah. Now, for a movie I'd never seen and a show I'd never watched, I really got invested into it so much so that at the end, I don't know, spoil it, I guess, uh, Wash dies and I lost my mind. That worked because he was a, you know, a very popular character. I mean, in a cast of very funny people, he was the funniest by far. So to lose him like that was extremely heartbreaking. Um, I guess I'll leave it. Serenity, my number three movie based on the TV show Firefly. So I'm taking front of your faces that you guys have never seen. I've seen Serenity and I watched the pilot of Firefly, but I didn't care. I But Serenity's okay. great. And isn't it Chiwetel? <laughs> That's my first uh, Chiwetel yes. Ejiofer's. Yeah. That's so... I remember, I think it was, you know, I, I don't want to call my shot. I feel like it was Born Ultimatum. I saw the trailer, but I remember, I remember just like the trailer vividly. It doesn't start with like a girl and they're like, she's like a captured and then she's immensely powerful. And then they show and I was like, this looks awesome. And then as I did a little bit of homework, I, I realized that it was a continuation of the show. Um, I know I've been told I would love the show. I know Matt Marnuzzi loves it. Uh, the yeah. movie's great. And I'll leave it at that. I, I, don't care Man, but nathan like, fillion would be your one of your guys yeah sure. i feel like that's what a lot of people have said yeah how, how um mal reynolds is his name yeah. See, i know yep. a lot, i know everything about it i've just never seen it um but the movie like i said is uh, my first take of chuatel and tudix what is leaf in the wind or something yeah. is a fantastic same as you i have no context for that character and that's just a well done scene so yeah. like yeah. you can tell that like joss whedon <laughs> shot the shit out of that so yeah I like that. Yeah, he wrote, directed everything, so that's awesome. Right Good for him. This the movie makes it Josh Whedon's feature directorial directorial debut. Yeah, See? Josh that, Whedon. That's yeah. cool too. That's awesome, and that's cool. Yeah, I, I, I did some. I, I was very similar to Matt, Matt's, where the movie was coming out, 
and people were talking about it. And so then I got the DVD set and and burned through it in like a day. I feel yeah, like so I watched episodes. It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I watched it in like a, I watched it in like a, a day, and it was like, holy crap! Okay, I'm on board with this. And so then I went to see the movie, obviously, and uh, yeah, it was great. Do you guys know what network it aired on? Was it on Sci Fi? Fox. It was on Fox. Fox. Fox? For the sense too, then, four days it was on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It was, Fox is so bad for that stuff. Where like they they don't they can never find a right like time slot for that stuff, and so they put it at like the worst possible times. So like like oh nobody's watching like yeah of course nobody's watching on a Sunday afternoon at three o'clock. Like <laughs> come on, I, I don't know if that's what it was. No, but it's always the worst. <laughs> they don't have time. Yeah, it's not time slots then. But. Yeah. Anyway, like, yeah, it's Fox is bad for that kind of stuff, obviously. But uh, it's funny, Matt, that you should bring up. We talked about the cinematic effect of uh, shows. Uh, my show or my show that turned into a movie. Uh, I was a huge fan of the show. Watch it religiously. Also on Fox. Uh, this is one of the ones they got right and was on for a long time in 1998. It came to the big screen and it. I was hyped just along everybody else. Uh, and I'm going to go over here. And so I was there opening night with a whole bunch of other people to see <laughs> these two. Cool. X-Files Fight the Future from uh, 1998, directed by Rob Bowen. Uh, I was a huge X-File nerd, was all about the things. I, when I watch the show, and we'll go to the, get the music off there so I can talk. Uh, it, my favorite things of the, on the show were the creature features. I was all about the the weird, like obviously being a horror guy, uh, is about the the weird one offs with the, the strange creatures and the kind of the frightening stuff. But they had this overarching story uh, with the, obviously with the aliens, and there was the government conspiracy, the smoking man, the whole the whole bit, and so. Uh, it got to the point where like the, the, that story was really dragging along and you didn't know where it was going and they had this like black ooze that was uh, the black oil ooze that was around that you saw that would go into people and you, they didn't really explain that uh, so it got to the point where people were like what the heck is going on so a bunch of that was kind of answered in the movie and um, that was pretty exciting uh, they had a bunch of cameos in this one of the big ones being Martin Landau uh, and then there is also Blythe Danner, who is with Beltro's mom, uh, featured in a big role in that too. Um, but uh, it was great, and like like you said, it was uh, just see it on the big screen and have a big cinematic thing that opens with a um, like a basically a terrorist attack on a building or blows up an entire building, like a government building. Um, and uh, it, the scope of it was humongous, and so like they. At one point, they go to an art Antarctica, and uh, they, the, it looks amazing. It looks incredible. Um, yeah, it just seeing them on the big screen and interacting. They brought and there's even a funny uh, little cameo by the lone gunmen who are like you know the comic relief guys throughout the show. They come in at some point and have a little funny show, funny little five minute scene. So it was, they they really appealed to the fans, but also it was like. A solid like storytelling, uh, and so it also uh, came to a head where these two have had you know this sexual tension for you know eight ep or eight seasons worth of stuff, and they've never thing, and they're just about to kiss, and you could like in the theater you could hear the audible like <gasps> it's gonna happen, and want 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 something interrupts them of course, and so they don't have their moment, but they do hold hands and some other stuff. So Ooh. yeah, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I hope so, they wore gloves. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it I it's. Again, we're we're talking about like uh, Scott said. I I I'd, I'd watch a show ten times out of ten rather than watch the movie. But for what the movie was, I thought it was really great, and I thought it answered you know a decent amount of the the questions that they brought up. Uh, and it was great. It was just great to see it on the big screen on the theater with a bunch of people who are obviously big fans too. Uh, and it was a good time. So yeah, yeah for number three, this would be an example of a movie though right where obviously you probably wouldn't go to it if you hadn't watched the show but you really had to be watching the show to watch to, to fully yeah. enjoy the movie the biggest thing is probably yeah. being there with all fans and you know you're all fans i was yeah. probably you said 98 i would have been 10 or 11 but i have not seen a minute of the show or yeah. the movies 
Um, but I feel like you're right. You're going there and everyone's talking about the show, which is a pretty you dope, have to, like, yeah. yeah. You, you definitely have to, like, you can kind of pick up where it's, I, I, I suppose you could kind of pick up what's happening, but without the, the all the previous episodes, especially of the like, the government conspiracy, yeah. you, like, you wouldn't understand, like, what's this smoking man that keeps mm-hmm. showing up at different things <laughs> and is in the background, and you were like, bum, 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 there's the smoking man, like, you, you wouldn't get the weight of all that, you'd be like, no, oh, not all. Like, this, if there was a Game of this Thrones guy? movie, I wouldn't go. Yeah, like that. Yeah. So thing, it's like, definitely made for fans. Yeah, which is sweet. Which is nothing wrong with that. No. It's, just, it's just one well, of those ones. I, I, I mean, know. this is this is at the peak of <clears throat> X Files. This is X Files Apex Mountain, mm-hmm. where mm-hmm. you know you yeah <laughs> you get that. Uh, uh, you know you, you have your mass your massive fan base uh, that's going to go see it at the theater, and mm-hmm. so that's gonna you're going to get the most of. Uh, of of your theater going people at this at this point in time 1998 yeah, yeah absolutely and um, so they went on to make another one too after this which was the second movie was, was oh, that's not, not your good next, that's not no, your next no, one on the list too. the second one is not does not making my list is not good at all <laughs> i did not enjoy the second x files movie but this one this one gets my thumbs up so uh, yeah one Number of the three. first things I binged when I first got Netflix was the X Files. Yeah, and I go into the first, I go through the first five seasons, and then I go into season six. And season six opens with like previously on X Files, and they show clips from the movie. Movie, like, yeah. oh, I got, I got to watch. Oh the shit, movie. is that how it yeah. goes? Yeah. yeah. Oh, because yeah, it's like it was like, after the end. No, 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 no. <laughs> Big stuff happens. Big stuff happens during the movie too. Like you need to watch the movie to, to go into the next season because Why don't more shows like, do that. It sounds yeah. amazing. That's yeah, so it's, smart. Uh, <clears throat> but uh so when that happens, like, oh, okay, I'll I gotta watch the movie first. So I yeah. search Netflix for the movie and it's not on there. No. <laughs> Why you need and physical media? Wah, yes, wah, wah. for sure. So <laughs> I've yet to movie see movie the yet. movie and finish the series because of that. Well, you can borrow it from me if you want. I've got, uh, I've got well, it sitting on my shelf over there. Speaking of uh, Fox canceling shows early, this was one that they probably could have stopped a little early. You, you can leave off a season or two at the end of X Files if you ask. Me. Well, once, once both of them are gone, once, a, once Scully and Mulder are both off the show, and they bring on uh, Doggett and uh, yeah. what, what their face they okay. brought on uh, Patrick, what's his name? Um, yeah, yeah. Patrick. Robert, Robert Patrick, Robert Patrick, yeah. and uh, what's her. Oh, I, I don't can't remember. remember. I know, yeah, but she, yeah. they both suck. Yeah, like, you're once they're okay. X Files, watch Fringe instead. Let's leave that. <laughs> I tried to get is, into Fringe. You didn't like it? Oh, Fringe is unbelievable. I just, I, I was like, I'll rather watch X Files. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, oh, I want Joshua Jackson <laughs> being a con man. PC. All right, let's let's switch gears. So we're gonna go from now, uh, what was a movie, yep. to becoming a TV show. So this will essentially be my two number two of of those. So um, um, this one, I have to say, um, I only recently picked up watching the show. There's only two seasons of it right now. Uh, it's still on air, so this is a one that people could you know easily pick up those two seasons and watch and continue. Um, I'm not sure when the when the third season is going to come out. The movie itself uh, came out in in 2014. Um, and, um, I had not seen it until recently. In fact, as recently as last night. So (laughs) I had never, I watched the show, um, because I was told by someone that I should check out the show because it's absolutely hilarious. (laughs) And, um, that, that movie, never saw that movie. That movie and series is what we do in the shadows. Now a little history behind why I didn't care too much to watch the movie um, as Andrew knows, I'm not a huge fan of Jermaine Clement and 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 like you know Flight of the Concords t- type type comedy, but um, I will say that uh, watching hearing about the show and what it was all about, and he's not actually in it, although he does it. He created the film with um, yeah, yeah. And I always pronounce his name wrong. Uh, Ta- Taika Waititi. Yeah. Um, they made the they created the story of what we do in the shadows together. Um, and he's got a hand in the show. They both direct episodes of the show, but they're not actually in it. But then I sort of heard what it was, checked an episode, and went, okay, this is funny. Yeah. And but I never cared to go back to the movie. And I will say this. Um, 
I'm okay that I didn't because I watched the movie and I did not enjoy it as much as the show. Really? Um, no, I did not. And now it's not okay. that it's bad, but let me explain a little to everybody. So basically, for those who don't know, both of them, like they're very similar. Okay. So if you've seen one, um, you're going to expect the same thing going into the other. Um, yeah. It's basically a documentary style movie slash show um, where you follow a group of vampires. So in the, in the um, movie, okay, you're going to follow these three characters. Um, and there's some other, 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 there's uh, one more too. It's well, guy, yeah, but these are the, yeah, these yeah. are the three guys. I don't want to give too much away, but you're basically following these three guys. There's a house of four and eventually five vampires, but, um, and obviously you can see Jermaine there and, um, Taika there. And, um, I can't remember the actor, the other actor's name, but you follow these three guys and their crazy escapades and there are various ages. One's like 800 and something, you know, and, um, and it's just really just, sort of dry you know like it's ex exactly what you would expect from these guys but the, it's just so uncomfortably awkward and you're <laughs> watching it and they're vampires but they're just being like people talking and like it's just so i can't describe like they it. live live together at the flatmate so like yeah. one, of the one of the first jokes is like oh peter you haven't you haven't done the dishes in like 400 yeah. years they have, Come a on, man. they have a group <laughs> meeting a group <laughs> yeah. meeting to discuss what what is not getting done and, yeah. and anyways so this is how the, the show is eventually basically, or sorry, the movie basically follows um, these uh, vampires. But then when you get to the show, which is what I prefer, um, you actually, they mix it up. It's the same format, documentary style. They're in, a, they're in an old time sort of Victorian type house, but you're actually following um, essentially, there's four of them um, and I'll, get, I'll save my favorite for last. You have a couple that, that, that are married there on the left. Um, and Matt Berry plays Laszlo there. He's absolutely <laughs> hilarious. He has, and, he has a, he has the one episode in the second season. There is like an all time episode, comic episode for all time. Like well, it is, yeah. I so, was dying. So he's married to the, to Nadia there they're married. Um, and then you go to the far right, you have Nandor who is, 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 is absolutely, I mean, he's even funnier. And in the and in, in the background, there, standing up with the stake, you actually have a, one of the familiars. You have Nandor's familiar. So he's not a vampire, but he lives uh, there and he helps around the house. And he's been promised, just like in the movie, but there's a woman. He's been promised that he will become or be made into a vampire, right? So you know, um, which never ever really occurs. And eventually, he finally sort of discovers that his family is a long line of vampire hunters, and and he accidentally winds up killing vampires <laughs> left and right, and sort of hides it. So it's very slapsticky, but but the one I want to feature is is Colin Robinson. He yes. is not a character that's in the movie. Um, he's with the glasses there, but he is what they call in the show. They've made this up strictly for the show, an energy vampire. They've made this whole concept up where he actually doesn't suck blood. He's just the boringest man alive, and he just talks to you, and then he saps your energy, and then he gets stronger. <laughs> it's the funniest thing. I don't know. I don't even. I don't know why I love this. I wouldn't think I would. It's it's, it's amazing. It's an amazing it, concept. And yeah. like he, he like and the other vampire, he'll do it to the other vampires, and they won't even know. And then they'll realize yeah. they're like, Colin. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they'll they'll get angry at him. Yeah. They'll, they'll tell him, you know, to leave the room. They just sort of they try to. He basically my favorite line of that whole thing is that essentially. Um, he came with the house. That's what they say. They don't explain where he came from. At the very beginning of the show, they're like, yeah, Colin Robinson came with the house. So he just lives there. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, so that oh, is man. my my pick for a um, show from movie. So. It it is pretty fantastic. I one of the one of the funniest things in both of them, I think, is uh and it you'll know why. It's my guy Reese Darby in the movie. The werewolf. Uh, he's the, the werewolf, werewolf. <laughs> and he's like, guys, and he's like, the guy, they're getting into a uh, tussle of vampires versus werewolves, and uh, they're on the street and they're getting ready to like rumble. And the werewolves? one guy's like, F you. And he's like, We're werewolves, we're werewolves, not not werewolves. Not werewolves. Yeah. Guy. Oh <laughs> yeah. my gosh. And like, Reese, and just like Reese Darby's mannerism in that whole scene and like thing gets me every time because <laughs> I love that guy. I think that guy is hysterically funny, just yeah. weirdo. But anyway, yeah, that sh and well, one of the fun things about that show is it's tied to the movies. I mean, it's in the same universe as the movies because they tie the movie yeah. into the show at some point, and there's a funny episode with that that yes. ties the two together. Yeah. But I will it's say amazing. you can watch that show without, no, of course, as, as I proved, course. without ever having seen the movie. So, anyways, yeah. that is my my uh, great first pick. Show. Great so, pick, Scott. So, um, 
So my t- uh, TV show from a movie has existed in every and succeeded in every um, form. It was a very popular book, uh, which then was adapted to a film, which was a true story, which then was adapted by the director of that film, who was the executive producer on this incredibly popular NBC show. And his fingerprints were all over it. And I'm talking about clear eyes, clear hearts. <laughs> can't lose you give me <laughs> friday night lights the tv show and i'm incredibly happy so with that I, the reason i picked this i picked one that continues a story from the films and one that's a straight adaptation so this only is from the movie and book in name really and concept that it is football mm-hmm. but it shares nothing in common with the film the billy bob thornton film from about 2003 the show debuted in i think 2008 uh, and it follows Kyle Chandler as the new coach of the uh, the West, uh, the Dylan, uh, the West Dylan Panthers uh, in Texas, and it's just it's a great um, drama in essence on what small town football is like. Uh, there's a lot to chew on on this. It's an ensemble show. The football scenes are shot incredibly because it's Peter Berg is who I was referring to earlier. Oh, so wow, Peter yeah. Berg oh, yeah. adapted the film and he directs the pilot a lot of episodes and i know most so season five which i've actually must admit i've never finished so there was a weird thing with the show it was incredibly popular it changed nbc switched its nights it could never get a following but it was incredible season two is one of the weakest seasons but three four were incredible and then it ended for like two years and direct tv bought it and then it was on like direct tv and then hulu and then i never really got it now i believe netflix has it has it all i should finish season five i've read every like how it ends but i've just never really cared to go back uh to that but again season one (laughs) phenomenal stuff the star quarterback gets paralyzed so he goes off on his own story uh and he does uh jason street has his stuff a million other characters that flow through the town, the inner workings, the politics, the coach, the, his wife, his family life, the football, the football scenes, the, uh, the players going to college the next year. And then, yeah, in season, uh, season four, he goes to the other school. They amalgamate. Michael B. Jordan <laughs> joins the cast, a very young Michael B. Jordan off the wire before his films. Um, so, again, as far as, like, a film that was adapted to a TV show, uh, Friday Night Lights. So are the are the no. characters the no. same actors no. the same nothing okay nothing nothing hmm. crosses over there's no reference to the uh, well the Buzz Bissinger I believe wrote the book about uh, the Permian Panthers and there was like those are all real people Booby Miles and that um, yeah. there is zero crossover uh, within that uh, Gary Gaines was the head coach there and in this it's Eric Taylor it is literally just football and name and nothing else. Well, I always like the con. Like I, I, I know obviously I knew that uh, the people were real people, and it's based on a true story, like the movie, right? Friday yeah. Night Lights. Uh, but cast, I, under- I, I love the cast. concept that, uh, and it's true in the states that Friday nights uh, is like football time in in America for like high school thing, and like all these people, not just like the parents and like people from the school, but like grown adults will go to these high school games and like of these small towns and like mm. the whole town will show up for these high school games and be invested in these high school games. It'd it's, be like, it'd be like you or I like going to like a, a massive football game right now. Like, even though like one thing, but like showing up for a thing, be like, Oh, I'm going to go. I wonder what the, uh, the, the kids are going to yeah. be like this year. And be like, it's because there's nothing else to do in those towns. And that's, yeah, but, but that's, that's all they it love it. But they also love and it. that and autograph yeah. sightings. And it's like, <laughs> it's insane. There's never really been a show like play, ESPN did Playmakers, which is silly, where it follows like the team. Ballers is okay. Uh, but otherwise, it's the inner workings of a team. Like this plays like a professional sh- inner workings of a professional football team. Well, because um, it, it, they take it that serious over there yeah, in the States. Yeah. And it's like, and it's legit. It's a re- legitimate, like, and they, uh, like, I like, the uh, I mean the movie too gets into like the pressure that's put on these kids, right, to perform and to uh, to produce because it, their whole future like some of these guys their whole futures are riding on these high school football games which yeah. are, like is mind blowing like these Dion are, Waiters you know, award winner 16... of the movie Tim yeah. McGraw Tim McGraw <laughs> <is> phenomenal <laughs> in that film he's uh, good 
Ironically, one last thing about Friday Night Lights TV show, stellar cast, a bunch of people who were given movies right away. The biggest star to come from that, Jesse Plemons, who's like wow. the, the I didn't know best, that. The, the starting quarterback's friend, frumpy he, uh... friend. Jesse Plemons is in Friday Night Lights. He's like the ninth lead, and he's by far the biggest star over Taylor Kitsch. He, uh, he may be coming up later on. Ooh. Um, I'm sure of the... he is. Speaking of the uh, <laughs> cast, Kyle Chandler uh, also must, I, I've never seen the show, but clearly had uh, did a very good job because he kept getting nominated for Emmys. Yeah, he wins in season five. But he was he's always great. he's a great but, actor. But mm-hmm. he was always he kept losing to uh, Brian Cranston. There's like three or four <laughs> years in a row. Brian Can- Cranston won, and then finally. Cranston wasn't nominated, so Kyle Chandler got to win. <laughs> That's yeah. funny. We're like, we're not even going to nominate him this time, so you got a chance, Kyle. Right. <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> That's uh, great. Moving on to my uh, first edition of the year. First and early the, edition? Uh, Kyle Chandler? <laughs> of the uh, show ruled. TV shows based on a movie. Yeah. Uh, my first uh, pick was. Um, to echo uh, the Firefly and Serenity thing, that was a movie based on a short-run TV show. This is a movie that got adapted into a very, very short-run TV show. I am talking about... Well, <clears throat> now to set the scene a little bit. So many movies get adapted into animated series. Okay, yeah. You can name so many. Jim Carrey had three in the 90s. It was Ace Ventura, uh, The Mask, Dumb and Dumber. Before that... Uh, Back to the Future had an animated series. RoboCop had an animated series. That was a rated R movie, got an animated series. <laughs> and similar to that, this rated R movie got an animated series. I'm talking about Clerks, the animated series. Oh, That's it did. Hilarious. That's awesome. Um, now, this show aired for two episodes before yeah. ABC took it off the air. Yeah, yeah I wonder why. <laughs> <laughs> I, I own I own this as well. It's uh yeah, I don't I definitely am not shocked. Um, or you could put it like there was no streaming services to Sure. It. Sure. Now the uh the initial order for the show was 6 episodes. So all 6 episodes are on the uh DVD or even the VHS. Yeah. Um I I would recommend even buying the VHS because you can watch all 6 in a row. The DVD is two discs, so it's three episodes, and then you got to change discs, oh. which is a bummer. Yeah. <laughs> to get up off my chair. Oh, no. <laughs> well, I mean, for a while, I had a multi-disc player, so oh I was gosh. in heaven for a I while. I forgot about those. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> That's funny. But uh, the show, and it's half-hour episodes, so it's real quick. It's a very quick watch. So you can watch the three episodes, watch them again with uh, commentary from the – Kevin Smith and Scott Mosier and the cast and everybody, and then put on the second disc. You can get uh, a week's worth of hilarious content in two and a half hours. Now, is it more fun watching? Because I've seen them, but not with the commentary. Is it more fun watching them with the commentary? Because like, hearing those guys take on the things and stuff. I love listening to Kevin Smith commentaries. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I just love listening to comment, uh, Kevin uh, Smith talk about anything. Yeah. yeah. But like, he's literally, so good at it. Yeah. yeah. He, he literally he, like in, uh, all of his you know Q and A DVDs. All he just talks. To him. Yeah, you just sit mm-hmm. there and talk about st- whatever he wants to, and I'm just like, oh really, Kevin? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, Which is yeah. what somebody sold to him was like, want to do a podcast? I think it might have been Scott Mosher, his producer. He said we should do a podcast. Like, what's a podcast? <laughs> it's like, well, it's a movie commentary, but you don't watch the movie, so it's just talking. It's like, yeah. I can do that. Sure. Yes, yes he can. <laughs> yes, he can. He's very, very good. Now, uh, similar to other animated series that are based on movies, it doesn't follow the movie very well. They watch their yeah. language. Jay and Silent Bob are no longer drug dealers. They're <laughs> they're credited. Well, the characters are more like merry mischief makers. Is what like a studio note gave to Kevin Smith. They can't sell drugs. Um, well, it was ABC, right? It was, yeah, it was ABC. Yep, that's Disney the mouse owned. owned that one. Yeah, <clears throat> but it takes place in the Quick Stop. Dante and Randall are in it. It's uh, the voice cast from the movie. So you got Brian O'Halloran and Jeff Anderson and Jason Mewes and Kevin Smith from time to time because Silent Bob speaks maybe once per episode. Um, and it also has Alan Rickman <laughs> playing a. Uh, uh, Hans from a uh, diehard type character. 
and he's terrific. Um, and the show is so quotable. Anybody who's seen the show and watched it over and over again, I have like a small group of friends who we every time we bump into bump into each other, we just speak in quotes from the TV show. I could say something like who's driving bear is driving. Some people don't get it, but anyone who's seen the show will be on the floor laughing their butt off and you can turn on the show. You'll see it and be like, why would he laugh so hard at that? It was funny at the time. <laughs> That's all we had to laugh at back then. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> all... <laughs> um, I think I caught the first episode as it aired. And then I was like, what, what is this? Is this a Jane? Son? I, I didn't really know Kevin Smith's movies. I mean, mall rats was the top of the list for me. So calling Jane silent Bob mall rats was kind of what I did. So I was like, is this the mall rats cartoon? This is terrific. And then I went to the TV guy. It's like, it's going to be on next week. Amazing. And then I watched the episode and laughed my butt off. The second episode is a clip show of the <laughs> first very episode. That's very funny. <laughs> yeah. The- hilarious. hilarious. And I was like, I hope this never ends. And it did it right there. <laughs> as you, as the words were coming out of your mouth, <laughs> I, I looked at the TV guide for next week, the next week, and it said Clerks was on. I was waiting. I sat. I was like, "Liars! What's 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 going Remember on?" TV I went on the guide? website and it said <laughs> next episode, episode three, and then gave a description. You could go onto that website for like years, and the front page was always next week's episode is the third episode. They never bother to take it down or change it. <laughs> Anyways, Clerks is one of my favorite movies. It is a terrific TV uh, uh, animated show, especially on DVD. Put it on. Two hours later, you're, you've got abs from laughing so hard. <laughs> <laughs> At what point is it a mini series instead of a, Is that like instead of a show? There's so few episodes, it's a mini series. Yeah, well, I was say. They never use that name, a term, I don't think that. Well, when something is usually two episodes long, that's somewhat of a miniseries or TV movie miniseries. Yeah. There's some things like this, but uh, I don't think the running time even is considered to be feature length for all of the episodes put together. Put together? No, because it was like 20 <laughs> minutes an episode, right? Because it was on commercial television, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right, Andrew, what you got? Okay, so for my first uh, movie into a TV, this is a series that was made into a TV series, and it lasted three seasons and then got the axe uh, mm-hmm. because uh, people are stupid, even though it had like crazy high ratings and uh, everyone loved it. Uh, it got the axe, so I hate that that um, this particular uh, company forever. Uh, so <laughs> it's one of my one of my favorite uh, characters, one of my favorite series, and I am talking about Ash. Oh, from Evil <laughs> Dead, oh, yeah. and uh, this the series is called Ash versus Evil Dead. It continued yeah. on from where uh, the series left off on Army of Darkness, and Ash at this point isn't like an old man uh, living in a trailer <laughs> park, uh, and he foolishly unleashes the ne- the the demons from the Necronomicon again in one of the most hilarious scenes of all time. Uh, I won't spoil it, but uh, when you see it, it's like, what are you doing? Like, why? In the first episode, isn't it? In the very first episode, he unleashes it. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to spoil it. It's gonna, it's gonna be hilarious. <laughs> so he's got this woman in in his trailer, and he's he's wooing her. He's wooing her in the trailer, and. <laughs> And she's like, read me some poetry. So he's like, <laughs> okay, I'll read you some poetry. So he opens the Necronomicon, yeah. starts reading the Necronomicon, yeah. and unleashes some demons to, in order to woo this woman and things. All right. Oh, boy. <laughs> and, uh, one of the great things about it, and I think this is in season two, that he brings, reunites Ted Raimi uh, and uh, Bruce Campbell in the, uh, a hilarious hilarity ensues between the two of them we got to see them at niagara falls and they're hysterical together uh and they're hysterical in this uh one of the great things too is they bring back characters uh from the original movies even from like the original evil dead they bring back his sister in this and she's in this for uh, a couple episodes and it's hilariously uh one of the great cameos i guess it's not a cameo because he's a character uh but it's um uh, Lee Majors 
mm. appears as as his dad, as Ash Williams' dad, oh, and it's great, yeah. and it is perfect when he when this when it came up, it was like Lee Majors is his mm, dad cool. is hysterical. I was dying. Uh, so like this show uh, basically is everything I wanted it to be. Uh, Bruce Campbell is firing on all cylinders, absolutely hysterical. Uh, the effects, and I'll go to this, are as gory as you could possibly imagine, and it gets into like the craziest situations you can imagine uh, with all the gore effects, pra all practical effects. It looks amazing. Uh, Sam Raimi is involved in this, and same with Rob Tappert. Both of them are involved with the show, heavily involved in the show, and Bruce Campbell is also, I think, as a producer too. Uh, and man, uh, this show is fantastic. I honestly, there at the one point there was. I think this Westworld and one other big show, American that, God, maybe, American maybe, God? but like it was like they were like around the same time, uh, and and like I think they might have even aired on the same night. And this is the one I was looking forward to more than those other shows. Like those shows are are very amazing, but I want I I was looking forward to watching this show because this show is so fun and like i was i just didn't entertain and, and like and, and two is like a, a half an hour show that was our complaint uh, that was our biggest yeah complaint. it was like i just got into it like it got half an hour right it, it gets ramps up in like 25 minutes and i'm right into it and credits and i'm like oh come on i have to wait the next week uh yeah and so yeah it it's fantastic i love that show anyway yeah that is uh that's my the TV one show. thing that needs to be said about that is the greatest thing that I've ever seen on television. I think we wound up finding you the prop is the puppet oh. Ash. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's up there. There I is a, I grabbed it. There is a, you know, a sort of a Henson style, if you will, <laughs> puppet of Ash that says some things I'd never think a puppet would say. It looks just like him. It is fantastic. And as soon as we saw that, we were like, someone is making that a puppet and, and they I did it. yeah it's the ashy ashy slashy puppet yeah it is i shoot i should have grabbed it it's sitting right there let oh, people well. look it up it's fantastic it's incredible those scenes are amazing and he's talking to the puppet bruce campbell is talking to a puppet of himself yeah. and at one point he's like who, who why should i listen to you and i'm like i don't know you're the one with your hand up my ass yeah. <laughs> like, it's, cold. it's amazing anyway no. yeah ash for evil dead that's a good choice that's a good choice um, all right, let's switch it back to movies again. So oh, yeah. shows, shows for movies. So I'm going to hop into the uh, 80s, er, late 80s, early 90s with my pick. Um, and I think if we guessed who the biggest fan of this series slash movie is, we'd probably say Matt if we all had to sort of vote. But um, growing up for me, if, if I didn't have a He-Man toy in my hand, I had myself a teenage mutant ninja turtle <laughs> in my hand. Sure. And when this, when this first off, when the animated series was out, I was all over it. I watched them every, every episode over and over and over. Had all the toys, had, you know, had the big, uh, you know, brain and uh, the sewer and just the pizza bus that threw the pizzas, just everything you could think of. The characters that were just randomly in, you know, in disguise, like Donatello with a hat and weird things like that. And just absolutely loved it. Uh, would sit and play for hours and then and then i heard you know and i mean i guess being i would have been 10 at the time so it's not like i you know i heard it like how you would hear things i saw a trailer for this <laughs> oh yeah oh, that's and the movie but well okay that's fair from enough. two fair enough it was my favorite <laughs> picture because he's holding the pizza there sure yeah so i uh i i saw a preview for the 1990 teenage mutant Ninja, although i will say Secret of Ooze is fantastic it's too. Great. I I'll Agreed. even I'll even fight, and I know not a lot of people like it, but I still like number three as well. But it's fun. It's it's you I know it's, the, fun. it's not yeah. as good clearly, but I, I enjoy it. But anyways, uh, when I saw that this was coming out, and when I saw the way that they looked, and you know, and of course Henson Creature Shop yeah. right is involved, so you know it's going to be good. Back then, I'm sure I didn't realize that, but um, I just fell in love like. I mean, I guess you probably would have had me no matter what. It's the turtles on screen. They're real. They're not cartoons. They're, you know, they're hilarious. You've got Corey Feldman doing Donatello's voice. You know, it's just, but 
this for me was probably the first thing I added to my list when, when we talked about this, mm. because I was just, I would watch this over and over. And I just felt like it's, it did justice to what the show felt like. Uh, Casey Jones was spot on. Like yeah. I just, like, just everything, crazy. everything about it felt like what I mm. did when I played with those, with those toys, you know what I mean? And, um, and it was just fun. And for me as a little kid, it wasn't, you know, overly scary. You had, you know, you had Shredder. There was that menacing sort of whatever, but I could have a good time and not worry about like going to bed later that night. You know what I mean? So for me, that is my number two show to uh, movie. I don't know if Matt has something to add there because I know you absolutely <laughs> love them. Other than the fact that you found that it was the wrong photo. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I loved the cartoon growing up. And I was, you said you were 10. I would have been nine when the show aired and or not nine excuse me four i was yeah. four years oh, old i was like what yeah. Yeah. it came out, yeah, it came out in like 89 80, 87 to 96 so it had right. a span there yeah. yeah so the movie i was 10 the show right. i would have been seven when it started so the movie came out when i was five yeah and it was the first movie poster i had on my wall i yeah, loved awesome. that first movie yeah. to death yeah and that movie I've, poster is great too oh I mean, absolutely the with them high, yeah. coming out of the, the yeah. sewers yeah. unbelievable yeah, yeah. I mean, these days you have to have uh, for Marvel movies. You have so many characters on the poster, yeah, yeah. and they're not okay. wearing their costumes. You have to clearly see Robert Downey Jr.'s face, sure. yeah. or else you're not going to see the movie. Apparently, no, that's just some <laughs> studio agent yeah. lawyer crap. But uh, <clears throat> as far as the cartoons concerned, I had a bunch of action figures. I had the playset. I had an aquarium with real turtles in there. Nice. I was a big fan. They would, on at least two occasions, they would escape their tank. They gotten too big for their tank and they got out, crawled across the floor and found my Ninja Ooh. Turtles action figures oh, and were hanging out. They're like, this looks familiar and ended up in my <laughs> sewer play set. Oh my god! That gosh. is amazing. That now, did amazing. you take like glowing, like you know, slime and lay it on the floor <laughs> in hopes that they would step in it and turn? No, I'm sure that idea crossed my mind yeah. at least once because okay. you could get slime yeah. from oh, a toy store all the time back yeah. then. Yeah, yeah. I, um, I no, go ahead. I was gonna say I, I definitely saw this in theater. Uh, was obsessed with it, and uh, I had the cassette of the soundtrack mm -hmm. that I listened to. No, I remember having cassettes. Turtle Power. Like, yeah, is that yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. MC Hammer and they doing Turtle Power, or was it? No, was no, it, uh, it public, is no, it's pub, not public. It is, it is like uh, somebody who is that's that's their only claim to fame. I'm trying to think. Of it. It's uh, it's oh, not the uh, Humpty Hump Humpty Hump guys. It is not no. e -Power, Digital Underground. Yeah. yeah. Is not oh. digital underground. I'm trying to think who it is. I'll have to look it okay. up. Okay. Yeah, we'll we'll get to that. Yeah. But I know what you're saying because that kicked on that kicked on the other day when I was rewatching. Because it, I know obviously like, I know uh obviously I know partners in crime. Uh, okay. okay. With a K. Of course. Uh, I and <laughs> the, obviously we you know uh vanilla ice does in ninja rabbit the second one. Yeah, he yeah. actually did it. But yeah. I man, that that turtle power song by Partners in Crime is incredible love oh. that song yeah but yeah i listen you just listen to that constantly that was up there with listening to uh you know ray parker's uh junior's ghostbusters for me this sort of the, yep. the, the you know always playing those or like uh um prince on uh you know 89 batman, batman. there right like those were the tr soundtracks sure. always listening to so I'm a, I'm a little bit older than you guys, obviously, but uh, and you know, you guys know I'm a comic guy. I was into the comics, so the, when the 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 show came out, the comics are very serious. It's like yeah. they're yeah. ninjas, right? They're yeah. ninjas first, and they get into other, you know, a little bit of the 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 other stuff, and like especially later on in the comics. But mainly, they're it's a very serious comic, and they're like ninjas that are turtles. Mm. Uh, and so when the <laughs> show serious. came out, when the show came out, I was like. Uh, hold yeah, up, exactly. like this is like oh, Kelbunga, dude. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it took me a while to get into it, uh, but uh, once I got into it, I was into it. But yeah, those first, like that first season, I was just like, uh, Ninja Turtles, huh? I don't know. But uh, yeah, I mean, it, yeah, I still loved it, loved it, and growing to love it, had the figures and all that stuff. But awesome. I've been rewatching the uh, the animated series this year. <laughs> I'm on like season two. I They're watch great. it so often when I'm bored at work. Like I'll just throw on an episode in the background. So I'm like episode ten of season two. I did like last week, and then I was doing a ton of Twilight Zones um, review back our Halloween episode. But, but talk I'm about sorry. a but nostalgia I've been doing it all season. 
Yeah, that's such a job. nostalgia boost. Eh? You put one of those on. Like, oh yeah, wow. man. I that's love that. We talked that... about. I wasn't sure. I'm like, should I do GI Joe? Should I do He Man? Mm. I've never seen a second of those. There's so many. I'm like, no, man. The best, safest, and the one that I'm going to get the most out of is because Ninja Turtles is always a property that's always going to be coming yeah. back. Mm. And I'm like. Mm. Not like a dead brand, like at this time, G.I. Joe kind of is. Yeah. And I'm like, Ninja Turtles will always be. They just said on Joe Blow yesterday that the original producers of the 90 film are trying to do a continuation of that film. I don't really? know if that's going to happen. I'll send you the article. Jeez, he just said yesterday it, where he's like, we'd re- like to make re- a like a sequel that continues this with the original costumes and the original story. And I'm like, might as well, because the Michael Bay shit didn't work out. So oh, go back to the, back you had to, the to bring basics. that up. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, that's a great choice. That I like great. that. I want to put, I want to put intros on one of my lists. It's coming down. It's coming soon. <laughs> That'd be great. If like the original producer said, uh, let's get, you know, guys in suits again, because yes. especially after the dark crystal show, Yes, you know Henson stock is the Henson creature, you know warehouse whatever stock must be yeah. much higher. They're like it yeah, makes yeah, we no can do sense that. if you're Netflix, you go that out of, on the cheap and you would make two hundred. I'm just saying, like as far as it, like if a Ninja Turtles four came out right now, Creed style, and like it would be unbelievable. It would be cheap to do. Ah, oh, I mean, it writes itself. What? What I want is there's a comic that just got released. It like the very first issue dropped a couple days ago, maybe like a week ago. Uh, it's called The Last Ronin, and it's like one of them. And it I won't spoil who it is. There's only one of them left. He's an old man, right? He's either he's older. All the other three turtles have died. It's just him left, and he's kind of like looking back, uh, and like. Uh, at the, yeah it's kind of morbid um, like, <laughs> but i want them to make that into a like a an animated version of that mm. like i.e like tmnt wow uh, and, like make it more t- uh towards adults because mm. it's a great story because he's like looking back and and with like regrets and missing his he's like the opening shot is him looking at the th- the the three weapons of the the three guys that have, that have died. Hmm. And he said, "I miss my brothers." Okay, who could it be? It can't be Michelangelo. No, it's I'm thinking it's Don. Sure. I think it's Raph. I think it's Donatello. I think it's Donatello. Let me tell, tell you. Yeah, it's Michelangelo. No, <laughs> he's the youngest. He's the youngest of the four. But you're not that much younger that like it matters. He, he, that's the thing. He's the youngest of the four, so he's the last one. Left by like alive. by like what months? But <laughs> we're also, we're also again we're also talking about the comic versions of oh, the yeah guys, okay yeah right. So it's not the comics version of Michelangelo that's like dude oh yes, he's, yes okay you're right serious samurai guys. Plus right? I guess not... it makes sense because you give him a lot of even if it was you give him the most deep character development that he yeah. turns into a regret regretful old man old where man. you're like my mikey would never be like, all alone yeah. yeah because raf's already like yeah in his he's, head. Rude yeah. he's already yeah. like yeah. yeah i've been waiting my whole oh, life for I, this. i love this yeah yeah like said, it's only one issue in and so i'm excited to see what it what it does but man i'm like that is a great concept and like obviously it's mm. a it's its own thing right because it's in the future but yeah mm. anyway I oh, thought you guys were a like, rabbit hole there or a turtle, yeah, turtle hole, a, 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 a manhole, a <laughs> manhole. <laughs> Scott, that was a good, that was a much better choice than my two. My two, I had some trouble with. There's like a lot. I, I kind of wanted to go with something that I'm like, okay, what's something that I've seen or I've liked or I like the movie? And um, I like, and that's me. I changed mine like five times probably leading up to it uh, today. Um, but I went with one movie that I know is a, is kind of a weird reboot continuation works in its own universe. We'll talk about that. That's why I really admire about the film, but it's one that I've seen at least a dozen times. I think I watched it this summer during quarantine and I was like, this movie is hysterical. It's always funny. I watched enough of the show and I grew up knowing about it, but I'm picking this from 2012. Oh <laughs> yeah. And it's 21 jump street and it's just a harmless fun. I almost put this on yeah. like a few high school movie list i almost put it on sure. the uh the cop film list um so it's been on the top of my mind for the last little while and like i said i remember seeing this movie in theaters little expectations 
I had seen enough of the show. Mainly, I had known about the show from Night at the Roxbury, which was in consideration for my number two being an SNL skit <laughs> uh, with the whole Richard Grieco thing. And I remember like Johnny Depp's a big star and he was on this show and I had seen bits of it. And the concept of 21 Jump Street makes for a perfect show. It's like this little division and they go in and they solve crimes and the crimes are done by the end of the episode and it's good looking police mm-hmm. officers and it's what they do. And I'm like, that makes a total sense for a TV show. So it's, again, going back at the time, a dead brand for a whole new generation of people. This movie comes out and what it catches everybody at kind of like the starting point, like Jonah Hill as a leading man, Channing Tatum coming off rom-coms and making it on his own. Uh, Lord and Miller, who again, it might be one of their first um, directorial debuts. And the self-awareness of itself as a film, the acknowledgement, the, I want to say the climate at the time that it mocks and makes fun of. Like, again, I think if you're talking about in Jackass scenes that you think are the funniest thing, I don't know, man, that bat, the backpack scene when he punches yeah. the gay black kid, I punched him for being a nerd, not for being gay and black. I was watching me like, this is so <laughs> self-aware. This is so witty. <laughs> It is so funny how they get their identities crossed and all oh, Channing Tatum's in with the nerds. It's low, easy, low hanging fruit comedy, but they acknowledge that the dorks are cool now and the jocks don't fit in. Uh, it's just, again, it's harmless, really cool, fun stuff. And like I said, I didn't have reverence for the show, but it is pretty neat to see Depp and Greco in yeah, a cameo, yeah, cameo at the end. Fun. You get Holly Robinson Pete, and then you get. The drug dealers take off their mask, and you're like, it's Deb. And then at that point, you're like, oh, shit, it is a show that crosses over yeah. in this reboot, tongue-in-cheek, continuing the story. So for the people who went, who were a fan and go, I remember this was a show, and it crosses over, which I'm sure that had come up at the time, but this being 2012, the wink and nods were kind of like fresh before it had really boomed from there of like a continuation like that. Um, so like I said, I was like, you know what? I've seen this movie the most. I could have put some better choices on it. Uh, but again, for because it's been on, on my mind for the last little while, it's an easy rewatch. Uh, and like I said, it launched kind of the star careers and comedic careers of like Jonah Hill uh, as a solo leading man and Channing Tatum into its own, his own stratosphere. Uh, I'll, I will always have like 21 Jump Street and 22. Um, so I picked the one that started at 21 Jump Street. The... The two movies are very meshing for me in my head. I saw them yeah. both once. So mm. jokes, I think, are from the first movie or actually from the second movie mm. and stuff, stuff like that. Um, but my depth showing up at the end of the first one, I thought was like one of the classiest moves an actor could have ever yeah, made. Yeah, he's always done like, that. He doesn't need this gig, yeah. but, he know, but he doesn't forget where he came from. He's like, yeah. yeah, I'll do you guys a favor for sure. It's stuff like that, Johnny Depp and that, uh, Bradley Cooper in Limitless, the TV Limitless, show, oh, and Wet Hot American cool. Summer, the TV show. Yeah. <laughs> Those are two yeah. things where, like, we don't, I don't have to come back. I mean, Limitless this. was actually pretty dope. It really continues the story. I had thought about it for a quick second. He's like in the show, and yeah. it continues his story from the film, which is pretty cool. I, I have to tell you, Scott, the amount of times that I've walked in. To the room, and my wife's watching Twenty One or Twenty Two Jump Street. It's the I can't easiest count. movie to watch. Yeah, it's, and like even I'm watching. Like I said, we put on the summer and the scene when they're just flipping their guns, and pointing at each other. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, that's hilarious. The Miranda Wright scene is hilarious. And again, you get two incredible. Oh, three. We'll lump Wriggle in there. You have three oh, kind yeah. of comedic three anchors like of that. Ice Cube, Offerman, yeah. and Wriggle. And yeah. they're just, you want to talk about the heat check? I couldn't tell you who gives the Dion Waiters award in that on heat check performance <laughs> because they're all coming off the bench and chucking up like 20 yeah. points. And you're just like, this is a deep roster. Cube gets yeah. more to do in 22, I think. But um, again, you just watch and you're like, this is just a fun, enjoyable movie to put on. Yeah, I like that because there's not a lot of picks that you can, you know, you talk about I'm saying there's a lot of bad ones out there from that are old 80s shows that they make into movies and you're just yeah. like, eh. and that one, I didn't have high hopes for it, but it works as a like funny one did as a I funny being movie. In the theaters on like, yeah. a, I think I saw it on like a Wednesday, not even cheap. Night. I'm just like, why am I here? Why am I seeing this mm. ridiculous movie? And then yeah. like that movie was like really enjoyable with like most of America. Mm. Yeah. Sure. All right, Matt. Matt, what do you got? Hey, um, continuing on with the uh, movies based on a TV show, uh, my number 
two, right? As far as movies are concerned, yep. um, hit my list late, late yesterday. Mm -hmm. I was like, this absolutely is a movie based on a TV show. <laughs> I put in the disc and I enjoyed myself for the hour and a half. Cause it's a very short movie um, based on, I mean, and I enjoy it very much. Now I want to bring up this first, uh, first slide here because I thought it was super topical as soon as I saw it. And I almost sent it to us, to you guys in the chat. I was like, spoiler alert. This is going to be one of my uh, movies, but uh, this scene right here had me rolling on the floor. <laughs> you got oh, Oscar the Grouch yeah. singing the Grouch Anthem in front of the American flag. And the subtitle there is, is just stand up and complain. <laughs> and if that's not the uh, American anthem right now. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> geez, yeah. <laughs> but uh, but my pick is follow that bird oh, based wow. on Sesame Street. What on earth Excellent. is this? Terrifying I've movie. Never heard of terrifying. This. What? Really terrifying. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. Heard so of follow that bird. bird. It's it's um essentially oh, I don't yeah. want to call it the missing right. Muppet movie, but yeah. it's certainly a Muppet movie. Yeah, mm -hmm. because uh, it's, it's even with like celebrity cameos, mm -hmm. like Muppet movies like to have. No, who are but those people that... on the bottom? Like, who are those stars? Okay, right there: Sandra Bernhardt, John Candy, Chevy Chase, Joe Flaherty, uh, Waylon Jennings. He he yes. sings with Big Bird in a yes, scene. He does yeah, and Dave Thomas. So you got three SCTV alums mm -hmm. in the in this movie. <clears throat> Chevy was in this. What year is this? Nineteen eighty-five. Um, and it tells the story of. The uh, this bureaucratic, um, a bird like orphanage society, terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> I was five, this movie terrified me, and it's hilarious because it's not like it's the Skeksis or anything who are terrifying, these are equal foam puppet equal. birds who say who decide that uh, Big Bird is too young to be living alone on in a neighborhood that doesn't have more birds for him to hang out with. <laughs> what? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So they send uh, Miss Finch to Sesame Street oh. who, uh, who convinces Big Bird to uh, move off Sem Sesame Street and go and live with the Dodo family. No. And that is absolutely hilarious as well. Um, the movie has far more laughs than any episode of Sesame Street ever did. Yeah. Well, and, yes. <laughs> and it's one of the great things of... Uh, the. It's one of the huge beneficiaries of going from TV to movie as yeah. far as production design and yeah, yeah. lighting and cinematography. It's all shot in and around Toronto and uh, they rebuilt Sesame street in a Toronto soundstage to make it far more, I want to call it three dimensional. It's not, you know, a TV set with four cameras pointed at it. You can get angles and close ups and move around. They added new stores to the neighborhood and stuff. It looks amazing. Um, Carol Spinney, who does who puppeteers and does the voice of Oscar and Big Bird, is on point for both characters, and it's amazing to see like these two personalities that he has to come up with the very the six year old, eight foot, happy, friendly bird, and then Oscar the Grouch. You, you, you it kind of bends your mind that that comes out of the same person, yeah, one so angry and one so loving, yeah, yeah. and uh, so. Big Bird is living with the Dodos and he's not happy. He uh, runs away from there and tries to make his way back to Sesame Street. The neighborhood is like, oh, we have to go find him. So they do like a cannonball run type movie yeah. where they all get into their uh, specific, you know, yeah, Muppet yeah. characteristic cars yeah. and go and are off to uh, find uh, Big Bird. And Oscar is hilarious. He's just going completely out of his way to not find Big Bird. <laughs> just travels off the road into a cornfield or something and happen just accidentally comes across him. And Maria's like, Oscar, we found him. It's like all, oh, all the rotten luck. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. It's a, that's like a that solid pick. Made me laugh. Now, if you wanted to keep, if I do want to consider it a Muppet movie, I mean, it's not the Kermit Fozzie, Miss Piggy. Yeah, Muppet. You yeah. can't, you can't, but, but it's, a it's so movie. similar in it's style. A, it's a Henson movie. But well, not I mean, author. it's really not even that because Doesn't Jim Henson them... wasn't like a writer, a director, a producer of Sesame Street. He was talent. Him and Frank Oz and all yeah, the puppeteers. Were just but it's talent. Henson. But it's Henson. Henson puppets, right? Yeah, so sure. it's a Henson movie, but they're not Muppets, so it's not a Muppet movie. <clears throat> this is well, one of Kermit the is. He's on. Yeah, it. 
was just gonna say Kermit shows up. Yes, shows up, but yeah. he makes appearances all, yeah. all over the place. Kermit it, goes everywhere. Right. Yeah. His could also be could also be considered one of those celebrity cameos for as far as this film yeah. concerned. But uh, but you you are right. The 3D effect in any Muppet slash Henson movie is mesmerizing because you don't just see the top half. You get to see Big Bird walking around. You see the yeah. full body of the dodos. It makes you go, especially as a young kid. These are real. Yes. This, can, this <laughs> the, I could be with these these characters, right? Like, and you get into that that scene with them on all the vehicles. Oh, that's my favorite. This yeah. is a movie that I love to hate and I hate to love. It's it's such a good movie. I saw um, I saw it in the theater uh, when I was a kid. I definitely went to see it in the theater and uh, was like you said. It. I think. Uh, I don't know if. I would have seen the Muppet movies before that. I, I, mean, I guess I would have seen the Muppet movies before that. I would have been eight, so I definitely would have seen some Muppet yeah, movies before. Those came point. out in the 70s. But like uh, seeing it on the big screen, seeing <laughs> the Sesame Street characters on the big screen was mind blowing for me at eight. Like I was just like, wow. Like you said, it's like taking, or like we've said throughout this thing, it's like, Back then, back in when I was eight, I had a TV that was literally the size of my my laptop monitor, mm -hmm. right? And to have that now on seeing mm -hmm. Big Bird as like Big Bird, it's like wow, it was crazy for a kid. So mm -hmm. yeah, it was very exciting. Um, one uh, not downfall for it, but uh, it was released in 1985, like the summer of 1985. So it was up against a lot of movies, <laughs> so kind of tanked at the buck box office. Like Back to the Future was out, came out. I mean, not the same day, but like a month earlier. But everyone was seeing that movie for sure. That plus they re-released uh, E.T. back in the theaters in like 1985. It was released really bad as well. They really released <laughs> E.T. like every year from 1982 on. Yeah. It was like 82, 83, 80, like every year they kept bringing it back. Yeah, uh, but and Fall why? Bird is absolutely on this list. Fantastic awesome. choice. Yes. <clears throat> I agree. I definitely love that movie. Uh, okay, so we're going to go to my number two. Uh, my number two is from one of my favorite shows ever. Uh, it was um, my favorite anime show ever. Uh, I don't love a ton of anime shows, but this one was definitely one on that I watched, and I've watched it a whole ton of times. Uh, so when they uh, became a movie, I jumped all over it. I didn't see it in the theater until two years ago. It was the anniversary, and I got to see it at Silver City on the big screen, which was incredible. And I am talking about Cowboy Bebop. Yeah. Cowboy Bebop is one of the all-time greatest anime shows you'll ever watch. It is uh, a really great story uh, about a group of bounty hunters uh, who every episode they go and track down a different bounty. Uh, and Spike, who's on the second guy in there, uh, that's got his hands in his pockets, is one of the coolest characters of all time. He is an incredible character. Uh, and he has a really great story arc in the whole show. And the movie takes place before the last episodes, in between the second last and the last episode. Uh, and so the last cool. episode, it's really... Like it has a really dour ending and has like a, a it's like this whole thing that's been building with spike and like him like trying to sort out his past and figure out his past and so there's a little bit of that in the movie and um and it revolves around this hacker character uh vincent who is uh basically trying to just like bring down <clears throat> the world or whatever so they're kind of save the world but uh I I, I I'm I love Cowboy Bebop. It uh, it definitely has that '80s like adventure show kind of feel, like sci-fi adventure show where like every episode they 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 get into a, a mission and they have to go and you know track a, a bad guy down and take him down and uh, team up together. Uh, and there's like you know hijinks between the characters. Uh, and so there's com. I mean, there's comedy, but it's not like cheeseball comedy. It's it's pretty fun. It's actually pretty funny. Um, but yeah, it's 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 a fantastic show. Love Cowboy Bebop. Anyway, that anyway, I'll say enough. enough I never knew they made that into a movie. I think it's cool that they do the second last episode, then the movie, and it all sets it up for the <laughs> final episode. That's genius. Yeah. That's cool too. 
yeah it's not it does it doesn't hugely impact the show and doesn't impact the final episode but it's just kind of like i think it's more to get the hype around the oh, last episode I thought it was like it changed everything for the final no episode. no it's kind of its own thing oh. uh which would like when you watch it, it it's like oh I, you know i, I kind of wish they had did the the whole like because there's like spike who's that guy spike spiegel versus vicious uh who's the main bad guy like his enemies from when they're younger and so like the i kind of wish they had incorporated a little bit a bit of that into the movie but uh it's kind of its own thing which is fine uh but it was i think it was just to garner hype and going into that last episode uh but anyway that was from 2001 Directed by the same guy who did the show, uh, Sinucharo Wantananabi. Not going to work anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he, yeah, he, one, again, we're, we keep bringing up is that it looks incredible. They, because it's done for the, the big screen, uh, the, the animation rate was higher and they could have a higher animation rate. So the, the animation looks fantastic it looks way better than the show uh which yeah so i mean that's my number two fantastic all right so back to your number one show shows so the top show from uh from a movie um so this actually came up already i think matt this came out of matt's mouth so we're gonna talk about a movie um that came from uh Again, from my childhood, from 1982. Now, obviously, I wouldn't have seen this in the theater in 82 because I would have been to. But um, is one of my favorite Henson properties that then, when I heard, was getting the Netflix treatment and becoming a series, I lost my mind. Talk about the dark crystal. Now, this was on and off and on and off my list. But... Because at this point, from what I know, and I keep hearing back and forth, back and forth, whether this is going to be made into a second season or not, they, I don't think it is. It Now it became, in my mind, almost a mini series. They did, like uh, I think, 10 episodes. Uh, it's a prequel to The Dark Crystal. It's gorgeous. And then it was done. And I went, oh, no. But I could not keep it off the list because, the and we're talking about the age of uh, resistance, Dark Crystal from 2019. I could not keep this off my list because of what it did for the film itself. Mm -hmm. So um, I love Dark Crystal from 1982, but I will not deny the fact that Dark Crystal from 1982 is confusing as hell <laughs> if you don't know if you don't know the backstory of Dark, the Dark Crystal. And I mean, there's books, there's comics, and Brian Froud, who created it, is involved in all of it, and it's a huge mythology. But if you just watch the movie, a lot of it, you go, huh? And you have to just you just have to appreciate the Henson puppetry and that kind of stuff. But when you go and go to the Netflix show and watch Age of Resistance, it does such an amazing job of pulling the story together in your mind and explaining who the Gelflings are and the Podlings and the Skeksis and giving you little backstories in each episode of them and talking about the seven clans. And because when you go into the movie, they're all they're all gone. They're they're wiped out. And, and so you don't, you just hear sort of, or see flashbacks <laughs> as the main characters touch hands and stuff like that. So in the prequel, you actually get to see all of the stuff that you just kind of did not understand from the movie. So for me, this makes the list for A, bringing puppetry back. Like, oh my gosh, I don't, CGI can hit the road. Bringing, pup, be, bringing puppetry True. back and watching the documentary about how they made it. And I just love seeing how they raise up all the sets and, and they're all up here so they can film the people doing, you know, doing the puppetry. Um, so I'm bringing puppetry back. It, it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. There's an all-star cast doing all of the different voices, which is fantastic. I was worried about it, but man, they nailed the mm's and all of those things. <laughs> Time and peg. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. Right. And, and, and um, just making the whole story make sense. So, you know, you always want to say, watch the original first. But this is one of these scenarios now where I would probably say to people, watch the prequel show first and then go watch the movie. It's not going to look as nice, but it's going to make a lot more sense. Sure. Um, and and so I, I couldn't keep it off the list. It was fighting and fighting. It's a Henson property. It was going on the list. So <laughs> there you go. So, Scott. <laughs> Making up right. a 
Yeah, I'm, big fuck. I'm not a Henson. <laughs> I knew you liked it. That's cool. I'm glad. I'm glad there's so much Henson today. Yeah. You think it's done? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's it. It's top five Hensons. Go. <laughs> And maybe a future list. I don't know. Drew, former Michigan quarterback Drew Henson. Oh, <laughs> there you go. Uh, is it my one? Yeah. Uh, for, your, for, for, for TV yeah, show. My TV number show. one TV show. Okay, guys. If you would ask me in August, I don't know what this would have been. But I, like most of America, was fortunate and lucky enough to discover this show on Netflix recently. Oh. And it is quite possibly <laughs> one of the greatest things You're welcome. I've ever seen. And I want to apologize, especially to AB. <laughs> we were in Niagara three years ago, and Zabka was there, Cove was there, yes. and yep. um, and Dan LaRusso, uh, Macho was there. No, no, and no I Macho was like, oh, there. no, Macho, I don't think Macho, Macho was wasn't there. there. It was just Cove and, and Zabka. Yeah. You, no, a few years ago. Are you sure that Macho was not there? Like, Macho was there a different year. One? After season one hit, after yeah. season one hit, so, Machio was there because I remember standing there and Machio's mm -hmm. line was down and out the door. And Not I'm together. Like, they weren't there no, together. They weren't there okay. together. It was Machio and then this the isn't a Niagara Falls Con yeah. podcast. Okay, one year Machio was there after season one, <laughs> yeah. and I remember sitting there being like, "Oh, that show hit. People are here. Good for him." I didn't care about Karate Kid. I could care less. Mm. I remember <laughs> one time I watched it as a kid uh, at my grandmother's house. And where I watched a lot of movies when I went over there and slept over on Saturdays. And I remember one time it was Credit Kid and fine, it was cool, whatever, who cares? Uh, I knew the lore of Wax on Wax Off, all that stuff. This, the kick, who gives a shit? How Mary Mother did a really funny episode. Other than that, I never thought about it. So, like I said, when Machio was there and his lines down the door around the, uh, and I was like, well, that's good for him. He's getting a paycheck. I heard the show's great. And you're like, the show's awesome. And I'm like, I'm sure it is. I'm sure it is. They're continuing it. <laughs> what else does this guy have to do? A script's coming across. He's going to do it. It's on YouTube. Psh, that's all I need to hear. Not for me. <laughs> then I heard Netflix bought it for like a hundred million dollars. And I'm like, oh, well, maybe I'll check it out. And I was jaw dropped at the production value, the story arcs, the characters, everything about it. I think the main thing and what I really want to focus on today is Zabka. Zabka himself and the fleshing out three dimensionally of Johnny Lawrence as a character is yeah. unlike anything I've ever seen, even in any movie or show, the way that they really are able to paint him as a very sympathetic character. And much like Hamilton, you have your Hamilton and Burr camps and there's kind of a political rivalry and professional jealousy and, how does this golden boy keep getting all the breaks in life when my life is so shit? I have to do everything myself. I have to will society to bend to me because I'm not handed opportunities like this golden boy is. And the fact how they carry that story on uh, and it's continued is is unbelievable that I'm jaw dropped in watching it because it really shades of grays everything. But again, I just can't applaud the writers for fleshing out and three dimensionally creating the cast of characters and taking the original characters and honoring the legacy of Miyagi and obviously mm -hmm. Pat Morita Pass. So he's kind of there in spirit and it continues. And it's and it's really an incredible continuation that I couldn't imagine like a dead 30 year dead brand. The last one came out in like 88. The last one, the third one is God awful, horrible. This doesn't yeah. even acknowledge those. Um, it does. And then you get this. Not yet. Not yet. But uh, the fourth one is a good joke. And then yeah. now you get this and it's just like something they've been working on and polishing up. And again, it comes back and it's gritty as hell. It's dark. Well, like it's, there's it's a, really dark. The season, yeah, I mean, obviously like, season two, when they get into the Cobra Kai guys, yeah. bring them back. Yeah, I mean, but even the then, darkest, like, most powerful episode in the show. Of course, but like even dark in like the violence, dark in like the yeah. subject matter. There's drugs in it. Uh, so like they sneak in a ton of swear words. Like it is a hard PG thirteen. And again, like I wanna, I wanna focus on a Zab because fall how he's rebuilding Cobra Kai what it means to him as a, as a studio, what karate means to him, the jokes that they make at, at the expense of karate again, uh, and how he's just trying to claw himself out of the gutter and how he's naive and being taken advantage of by Kreese when he comes back and how 
he and Macho, and it continues that rivalry. Like I said, I've never seen anything like it. I've watched it three times already. Uh, <laughs> season three hits in January. Party at my house. But in all honesty, <laughs> um, my like by far, if this was August, I don't know what I would have filled the spot. But by far, in ink, in blood, number one was Cobra Kai. The one of the best shows I've ever seen. Season one and two. It's the it's, best. It's, it's, around. Around. <laughs> it's it's so funny because our our friend uh, Adam Fontaine. Uh, I, I, because I know he likes Karate Kid, right? And so I kept trying to get him to watch it. I'm like poking at him to watch it. I'm like, you got to watch the show, man. I know you like the Karate Kid. Why don't you watch the show? And he's like, oh, I'll get on it. I don't know. I don't know. He literally did the exact same thing as Scott. I know. And then he watched. But he likes it. the show. I don't know why he wouldn't or likes the movie. Oh, I know, but like he, he was just kind of, he just wouldn't do it. And then, and then he literally did the same thing as you started watching like one episode and like, boom, like went down the, the thing and he came back to me and he's like, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Like I said, so just the fleshing of the characters, the story, everything. Like, and I, exactly the same thing. Um, man, regret not giving my love to Zapko when he was here. I would have been all over that photo. That Q and A, that Q and A, oh, I still have I that Q and A video on my phone. And that Q and A that Q and A video on my phone of of Martin Cove doing the uh, uh, the rules of of Cry, uh, Cobra Cry, like mercy is not allowed in my so in my dojo, is it? No, said say. It's pretty funny. Uh, anyway, and like I went back and rewatched the film, and there's just little acknowledgments that you wouldn't pick up, like the push ups on the knuckles is a thing, and yeah. when he Miguel he makes Miguel do it later. Like there's little sprinkles, like I said. It's one that like you really got to see before you can watch him. A bunch of my buddies watched it without seeing Karate Kid. I don't know if Natalie has, but I, uh, it, Fontaine, it showed it to his, Fontaine showed it to his kid and, uh, his ex yeah. before the show. And then they, or before the movie, and then they watched the movie afterwards. I was like, what? Okay. Why? <laughs> why? But sure. Anyway. But yeah. My number one, easily Cobra Kai. Cool. Um, like you still haven't watched it, right? Uh no, <laughs> I'm shocked. It's un unbelievable. Oh, uh, it was, I thought for sure you did because we were talking no, about the other one. No, I like most people. It was number. It's like one of the most popular Netflix shows of all time. It was like number one on Netflix for like 27 days. Yeah. It's the uh, other thing that's always on my wife's iPad right now. She's watching them. It's unbelievable taste. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> we did the uh, first. We did the first. Uh, you know, with my daughter, the first Karate Kid. Um, but I'm not going to show her the show. She's it's no, too. No, no, it's, but uh, so I'll do it myself. But uh, that's why I freshly watched Karate Kid so that I can do it. But I just got too many other things on the docket right now. So. Yeah, we well, just know that like when you uh, commit to it, just you're not going to want to watch anything else. You're not going to once, you, yeah. once, you <laughs> once you start it, you're not going to. It's like put everything else on the back burner because you're watching the whole thing all two all two seasons, which are not long. No, so. but but yeah, you'll burn through it. You will. You'll stop. It's you'll unbelievable. Start. I can't believe I, how good Zabka and Machio are. Like they're yeah. phenomenal. They're giving so much to do. Um, okay. Yeah. Uh, moving on. Uh, moving right to along. My <laughs> top show based on a movie. Okay, I told you guys about this in the uh, in our chat uh -huh. uh, earlier this week, and it hasn't changed because. Um, we're gonna go back to uh, Galaxy Far, Far Away. Should have put this. With, there. This is a great place. <laughs> the Mandalorian. And just looking at this poster here, though, I think it's a fan-made poster because a couple of these characters have yet to be introduced or confirmed to even exist in the second season. Here, <laughs> we got Ahsoka Tano and Bo Katan and Captain Rex down here. Oh yeah. So I'll just keep mm -hmm. that up for a second because it may be false. <clears throat> Anyways. This show, like uh, Clone Wars and Rebels before it, really speaks to the Star Wars fan better than the sequel trilogy has. Amen. As far as movies are concerned. For sure. Um, cer certain things in... Uh, this The second season is just uh, premiered. And I'm going to talk about that for a second because they introduce a character who was in the books Cobb Vanth, character who uh, I've heard uh, wonderfully called Phoba Fett on uh, <laughs> other uh, Twitters and YouTube channels. <laughs> it cracked me up. That's funny. I didn't hear that. That's funny. <laughs> Is the character who uh, finds Phoba Fett's armor um, and uses it to save his town from uh, a mining 
uh, syndicate who has taken it over after the Empire fell. Now, this character is a very, very minor character in at least in just in one book, or if not all three of a certain. No, I, I think, think, I think up one book. Chuck, this is just second one Chuck Wendig book. Chuck Wendig book, yes. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. aftermath, the aftermath, second one. Yeah. Point is, yeah. virtually forgettable. But the hardcore fans who have read that book and know that character, know that name, and know the whereabouts of Boba Fett's armor, um, you know, kind of want to see how that story fleshes out. So they put him in the TV show. That's something the sequel trilogy of movies didn't do. We had, you know, all of this information as far as uh, what characters were up to in the years between Return of the Jedi and uh, what would be The Force Awakens. And then they just threw that all out the window. It's like, we're going to we're going to create new characters and new stories. Don't worry about, you know, what you've spent your life doing as far as <laughs> being Star Wars fans is concerned. Forget all that. Well, the geniuses that are John Favreau and um, crap, give me his name. Bill Filoni. Dave Filoni. Exactly. Who are uber Star Wars fans who uh, grew up loving the movies and collecting the action figures and playing with those action figures as kids, writing their own stories, got the chance to play with the real characters or, you know, uh, new characters in their own little corner of the uh, universe and say, well, what if Boba Fett and IG-88 went to go find Yoda? It's like, well, we can make that a TV show. We'll change the characters' names. We'll make them look like Boba Fett and look like IG-88 and we'll make Yoda a baby. But everyone's gonna love that for sure. I talked to LP. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to, oh, my mom. My mom was obsessed. Um, the introduction of the child into the Star Wars canon has, you know, been an absolute uh, firestorm of might merchandise. Might be the greatest decision Star Wars ever made. I'm just, <laughs> I'm not joking. It might well, be yeah. the one one of the most incredible, like. Uh, blind sides too, because uh, we've we've talked about this obviously off air, but history like, repeating how, itself. <laughs> how did they keep that a secret? How did they keep that a secret up until airtime? They like mm -hmm. literally the world found out about to look at. Yeah, Baby Yoda, and uh, they uh, the second that it aired, like in a, in a time when nothing does it, like everything Iger, gets leaked. Iger said, and to his credit, I respect what Bob Iger said. He's like, we knew that we could have had, but the, uh, for Christmas, that's why yeah. there was no baby Yoda stuff. But yeah. we decided that it was going to be better for the show and the like fandom. If they all found out once it aired on Disney plus, plus they yeah. need to get their subscriptions up, of course. But of course. so they didn't, so there was no concepts, no pop leaks, no stuff leaks, no yeah. pillowcases, socks. They get all that in season two <laughs> and they have, but again, what an incredible business decision. And, and for the purity of the show, you don't see enough of that, certainly yeah. from Disney. And it was, well. great for the, it was great for the Etsy market, as far as people are concerned, because <laughs> oh, sure. they saw that and they're like, wait, nobody, I can, nobody can buy Baby Yoda yet? I can yeah, make that. Yeah. Well, you can get it from us. <laughs> yeah, sure. I definitely know of at least three different people who uh, like qu uh, quilted their own Baby Yodas. Oh, um, oh, man. Off Baby Yoda. Uh, garden gnome here <laughs> amazing uh so yeah lb wants that show and i'm like you gotta subscribe to disney plus and she's like oh i don't want to do that and i'm give like well, I guess you're not what? i'll give her uh, mine <laughs> i'll give her mine <laughs> I'll, I'll give her mine. we don't do illegal things scott <laughs> all right yeah uh, uh, mandalorian <laughs> my number one show based on a movie absolutely uh, one of the things, oh, and uh, too, it's funny that you uh, you now brought up two space westerns because the Mandalorian is a very much a another space western, right? You're like it very much feels like um, he is like uh, you know he's obviously a bounty hunter, but uh, it feels like he is, and, and especially this last episode, the first episode of season two, it felt like the whole Clint Eastwood things of like saving village. Yeah. There's the previous episode with him, uh, you know, bailing out that one village. It's got the, the whole sem seven samurai yeah. se uh, magnificent seven feel where they, when he they trains them. Yeah. Yeah. trains the village and all that stuff. So it, it very much feels like another Western, which is very much in line with, star wars that it feels like a space western but anyway yeah mandalorian awesome and ab you're up you can continue oh, yeah. All right. <laughs> All right. 
we're going to continue on uh, with my number one. Scott already predicted this from me. Uh, this is a movie that I love uh, that was made into a show, which is very different from the movie in that it has nothing to do with the movie, uh, original movie other than the location and the format. And the format is uh, basically each season tells a story arc of a crime. And uh, okay. and it happens to be in Fargo. Uh, and so the fact that it takes place in Fargo is the only thing that really ties it together. And then you find out that some of the things are tied together this season's. That's kind of a spoiler. Uh, and I won't obviously won't spoil what, what gets tied together. But uh, this series is brought by Noah Hawley and it is incredible. Me and Mike talk about this constantly where there is not a single episode of Fargo that I don't think is incredible. Like, and mm -hmm. I can't say that for every show where, uh, uh, there's, you know, there's, there's filler episodes at every show. Yeah. There's always a filler episode. There's always an episode that kind of like, you know, lulls, especially like, uh, in these kind of shows where it's, uh, you know, a 10, 10 episode yeah. story. There's always those, you know, a couple episodes in the middle that kind of like drag it out, drag things out. Literally every episode of every episode season that's happened so far is incredible. And it's every, every season it has had a crazy great cast. Um, I'm kind of highlighting a little bit of here, but this season, this is the first season. It also has Martin Freeman and Billy Bob Thornton, but then you got Odin Kirk there. And uh, I can't remember her name. What is her name? Oh, Allison Tolman. Yes, yes. Allison Tolman. Yes, sorry, mine just blanked there. Uh, that's from the first season. Second season here. Uh, there's your boy Jesse Plemons, Scott, oh, guy. Uh, and Kirsten Dunst. There, uh, you've got Keith Carradine, uh, Patrick Wilson, uh, it, uh, Ted Danson, isn't it? Sorry, Ted Danson, uh, TV royalty, Ted Danson, Ted Danson. Ke Were Keith you Carradine. saying Keith Carradine's Patrick Will? And then I see how you got those two confused. He's in the he's in season one, Keith Carradine. Keith Carradine's in the first season. He is, in fact. So tell us more about Patrick Wilson's character. Yeah. <laughs> uh, third season, you get a double role, double shot of Ewan McGregor playing two brothers and my homegirl, Carrie Coon, who I absolutely love. And it also has, um, um, I can never remember her name. I can never get her name right. It's uh, from Scott Pilgrim. Mary, no. Mary Elizabeth, uh, Mary Elizabeth, Elizabeth Winstead. Winstead. Yeah. I always, I always want to say Elizabeth Mary Winstead, but it's Mary Elizabeth Winstead. Just say Ramona, Ramona, Ramona Flowers. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then the latest season as all about Chris Rock. Uh, it's, it is an incredible series that uh, revolves around this kind of a crime story and kind of fleshes out this crime and. Uh, uh, usually in a small town this one this season feels a little different because uh it kind of ups the ante in that it involves a, a lot around uh race 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 relations and the, there's like the mob uh the italian mob versus the black mob here and uh it's been very good i'm not all the way through it yet uh, again, in, there's not a bad episode. It just feels a little different. Whereas the other ones are kind of a small town hillbilly, not like hickish kind of vibes to it. This one has a lot more, feels like it's a lot more important. Uh, so I'm liking it. It just feels a little different than the other three seasons, but man, this show pound for pound. And I don't think enough people talk about it uh, other than me and Mike. I don't really, I haven't really heard anybody talk about it at all. And like it, it's mind blowing to me that a, that it's lasted this long based on the fact that I don't know anybody that even talks about it ever, but like, it doesn't even get any hype anywhere that I see, which is criminal because it is amazing. And clearly somebody has got to be watching it because these big name stars keep yeah. signing on to do it and being <laughs> like involved in it. So like clearly somebody has got to be watching it, but it's just not anybody that I know. Anyway, yeah, I mean, there's a talk about an example of in my. I mean, I like the movie Fargo and all, yeah. but I feel like the movie Fargo gets more credit than what it not than what it deserves, but it's bigger in name than what it is. But this show is so much better. I mean, it's not yeah. the same, obviously. It's not trying to be the same, but 
I just, when I hear Fargo, I think of the show now, not the movie, mm -hmm. which is a testament to it. And man, like you said, some of those actors and, and some actors where you're just like, ah, I kind of wrote them off. And then they play the part like Kristen Dunst in her season. Oh yeah. And, and you're just like, Whoa, nailed it. And I love, um, um, Oh, what's her name there from the leftovers? Is it uh, Carrie Coon? That's what I said. That's Coon, yeah. I love me some Carrie Coon. She is she is so, so good. good, and she was so doing good. she was doing that season as I think the leftovers was wrapping up, and yeah. and both of those shows to me are very very deep, and um, so I just I fell in love with her when I saw her on both of those. Uh, yeah, a show that everyone should check out for sure. Um, I made I, mention uh, about how each the seasons while it's an anthology type show do have some connective tissues to it. Yep. Just um, yeah. Proof. The first bit. season has connective tissues, even to the movie. Does. In, oh, in the, true. Yeah. Yeah. In, he uh, find in the movie the money. All right. Yeah. Steve Buscemi has got a sack full of money that he buries mm -hmm. in the snow. And yeah. then later in the movie, he can't find it. Well, yeah. you know where that ends up in the TV show. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Because it, it, cause it's still all in Fargo. And that's the one yeah. connective tissue that it's all revolves around Fargo. Uh, one of the other guys, and I, I, I failed to mention him and I because I loved him a lot, uh, is Bakeem Woodbine, mm -hmm. who is, appears a lot in throughout the 90s. He's in a lot of uh, like some, like very small roles throughout the 90s. He was so good in uh, his season there. I think it's season two he's in, yeah. Bakeem Woodbine. Uh, he's fantastic. So he shows up, and he's got a really primo role in that one so i love shout out to bakeem woodbine if you're watching <laughs> no i'm saying i'm saying watch out for him i'm saying no, I know, I just thought, him thought you were throwing. come on you're doing great <laughs> um all right let's uh let's get this final lap around here um so we are going with show to movie and mm -hmm. i am not pulling any punches here my number one we know it was happening we got a theme going on here it is the Muppet Show. Now the question becomes: which To which of the many films? Mm. And uh, and if you know me, you probably would have put your money on the Muppets from 2011. And uh, I, I know mean, Matt. Yeah. I know Matt cringes at that, but um, I did not. I did not pick that. I love it because I love the revival of it. But what I actually chose um, instead was the original. The Muppet Movie from 1979, um, because I I actually really loved and I just rewatched it. It's 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 been a while, um, so I actually rewatched it um, to really solidify the premise because they all blur together for me now, right? There's so many of them, and since that one was so old, it's been a while since I've seen it. Um, I love the way they took what was the series right from 76 to 81, and this movie came out three years into the Muppet Show. And what they did was they basically said, okay, we're going we're gonna to take a movie from a show that already exists and we have to somehow introduce these characters, right? So I love the premise that basically Kermit is singing, you know, Rainbow Connection in the Pond. And then he gets this sort of idea planted in his head by, I think it's Dom DeLuise. Yes. Um, so, you know, you, you, you could make it. You're a good singer. You could make it in Hollywood. And essentially the whole film is him traveling to Hollywood um to to you know to get famous and all in the way he meets all these characters which happen to be all the muppets yeah. which is, is and this is i love it too because it does very much parallel the 2011 muppets which obviously it parallels the muppet movie where again kermit travels to meet all the muppets and get them back together right to to save the muppet studios i love that whole concept of we're on the road Oh, here's this character, and here's what he does, and here's this character, and I love seeing the backstory of what they supposedly did before they, before they kind of became famous and such. Um, okay. And the the funny thing I like about this movie is it's very like meta. It's a movie within a movie, yeah. Right, like Kermit's got the script that's already written for the movie <laughs> that he's that they're currently in, and so at any given moment when they want to just jump scene, they're like. Like, I remember when the Electric Mayhem had to find them. They're like, how did you find us? Well, oh, well, we just read it in the, the script. script. It said, yeah. here's, <laughs> here's where you're going to be. And then, whoop, they find them. It's very, like, you know, sort of slapsticky like that. And then there's this weird underlying premise villain in the movie. And his name is Doc Hopper. Yeah. And he's, like, he essentially, and it's so weird. He 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 operates, like, a frog leg a business that's like French fried like frog, K legs. frog legs, like, yeah. like KFC, but but with frog, frog legs. legs. Yeah. And 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 the weirdest part about that is 
he's chasing Kermit around, not to like what you would think would be to cook. He's chasing him around to make him his spokesman. He wants yeah. to like, and if he doesn't make him his spokesman, he's going to like blow them all up. It's the weirdest sort of yeah. back plot, but I just love it. And man, right off the hop, the songs, Rainbow Connection, moving right along. Oh my gosh. And then Matt, if you didn't blow my mind today, put and follow, um, follow that bird on your <laughs> list. They literally are driving down the road yeah. in the middle of the Muppet and, movie and, and Big, Big Bird is sticking. walking. And yeah. this is six years before Follow That Bird. Yeah. He's right. walking down the road and they stop and talk to him. And I'm just like, this is amazing that yeah. he's in there. Talk about cameos, but you got Milton Burrow, Richard right. Pryor, Steve Martin, Steve everybody Martin. under the sun. Steve, Martin, Steve Martin's my favorite as the yeah. waiter. And he's yeah. like super sarcastic. Oh, man. Absolutely. So, so it, it, you know, it's a hard fight there, but I think I am now back on board with this being my favorite of the Muppet movies. Ooh. So there you go. It's def it's definitely great. I one of my I think one of my favorite things in there, and it's and it's a kind of a recurring thing, is uh, Sweetums. Oh, chasing <laughs> Sweetums. Him down. Chasing him. Come on, guys! He's like he's like I want to go too, and he's got his little suitcase. And he's always chasing them. <laughs> love it. I love, I that. love Sweetums yeah. to death. Saw at the Muppet 3D Theater in Disney. There's a there, there's you know it's all on screen. But then a real Sweetums comes out in full <laughs> costume. Oh and, wow! And Vanessa will attest to this. I was a full grown adult when I went there, but didn't have a kid at the time. I literally went, oh, "It's Sweetums!" <laughs> like I was gonna get up and grab them. Like, oh like, yeah. Uh, yeah. There's, uh, one thing in that movie I'll just mention quickly, and uh, you spot later in life as an adult and learn about. Uh, uh, audio replacement and stuff. Uh, Milton Burrow is the uh, owner of the uh, secondhand car dealership, right? Yep. Yeah. And at one point, uh, he, uh, he's trying to sell him a car and then the bumper falls off. And he says, uh, uh, let's get rid of this. Uh, he says, somebody get rid of this uh, Jack or something. You see, he, yes, his, yes. You, he, you can hear him say Jack. Yep. His lips say something different, though. Mm. There's a curse word in that Muppet movie. That oh, really? Didn't make it doesn't cut, make sure. it. Yeah. yeah, that's funny. Yeah. Isn't it Sweetums? Isn't that the Sweetums part? And Sweetums, Sweetums the is the Jack. Jack. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sweetums is the car and pushes it out of the way. That's yeah, and, and it's all his because he puts a little. He kills a bug and it makes the car like eleven ninety five. Nineteen ninety five or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. So Scott Muppets, what's your Muppet movie? What's your Muppet? <laughs> I've seen the ABC revival. <laughs> no, we talked. That. This is on my list. I'm, Muppets did make a list of things I've never seen. Remember that one? That's right. Ago? Not one. So um, I just I, this is a tough subject. I wish I wish I had a show that I like love. Like I don't know, like universally love. Like those are that's a great choice. Like because the Muppet show is so timeless and it's like an iconic show. Like you would have seen it, you could put it on. And then the movie's great. And the movie launches this universe. And I'm like, there isn't like I wish I had an answer. Like my number one is is good. It's a show that uh, I had seen bits. Like I remember vividly watching it when I was a kid. I know it was on Deja Vu or whatever else, like on DirecTV at the time. I I I love the concept of it. The concept of itself is a timeless idea. Uh, and it's done in a trillion other shows. It we, you know, every September there'll be a new batch of shows and at least 10 of them follow this concept and, uh, and it's done as a movie. And I saw the movie and it's one of the most rewatchable, enjoyable, incredible films. Uh, and what I'm talking about is The mm. Fugitive. Oh, yeah. And the reason why is you look at the story of The Fugitive, man who's falsely convicted of killing his wife. He believes that the killer is still out there. He's hunted and he has to go on the run. And as a fan of 24, as a fan of any sort of action style show, it just makes an incredible concept. It, it's just very simple, easy story. Mm -hmm. You can go anywhere from it. The adventures he got into on the show, I remember I caught bits of it. And then ultimately he's exonerated and freed at the end. And he catches, I remember the finale. I believe he catches the one-armed man at like a carnival or something like that. And then they're on like a, a Ferris wheel or a ride or something. I, I vividly remember my dad telling me about like the concept of the story. And then we watched the movie, the fugitive and it's more of a streamlined approach over two and a half hours. Uh, and it just makes like a pulse pounding film. It's one of the incredible, like 
I know it's held in high regard, but like I remember Dan and I watched it years ago. It was on, and I'm like, this is one of the best movies of the '90s. Like, I don't know if people refer to it as such. There's so much, but like, The Fugitive is an incredible '90s mm-hmm. action movie that like doesn't get a lot of love. The sequel's great too. One Tommy Lee Jones and Oscar because he's just yeah. owning when he pops up. But again, it's I, the reason why I put it an incredible film, super enjoyable, and I like that mono a mono chess match where you do you get harrison ford you get tommy lee jones it's almost like heat or something like that where you get two mm. a-list celebrities at the time good bad this bird v this and then a great supporting cast of characters and, and that guy's famous that guy joe, joe Pimpley, you know. <laughs> so uh <laughs> like i said it's it's a great concept for a show it's an easy concept for a show innocent man on the run it's every season of 24 it's pulse pounding and it makes the episodes great that it's net must watch the next week take that concept adapt it to the film it makes an incredibly enjoyable action film <clears throat> with two stars a great vehicle for both of them and uh and like i said so i, I nothing more other really than the film watch it if you haven't it's an incredible 90s action movie um but like yeah the the fugitive show which you've seen bits of um, into the fugitive, the movie, which is incredible. I feel like yeah, it was so. really big at the time, but you're right. Over time, people don't talk about it much. Kind of, no. uh, yeah, yeah. Like I don't think so. True. Like it's not like if you rank Ford's and like rightfully so, he's got a lot of other bigger hits around that time. He was doing a lot, like he did Clear in Prison Danger and this, yeah. uh, uh, and then that comes out, and then it's right into like Air Force One and stuff like that. But it's like I feel like the fugitive. Like I remember vividly, we were at gyms and it came on, and we were like. Man, I've not thought about this movie in a long time, mm-hmm. and it is yeah. if when it's on, you will watch it. It is an incredible watch, like I said. So, it well, it just has I, a it, ton of it. Tons a ton of oh, sorry, it has a ton of like set pieces. Like yeah, the, you have the the train the sequence. Dam? You have the, the dam sequence. Yeah, right? I mean, it has multiple like big action sequences where you, you you forget about them, right? And then you watch it, and it's like, <laughs> holy crap! How did I forget about the train? Holy crap! Well, how did I forget about this? Yeah. Right? And it's like. And I yeah, think I had the, just... uh, I think I had the U.S. Marshals uh, Burger King Cup or something. <laughs> That's right. That's cool. <laughs> I definitely uh, have. Yeah, the, not much... the, I had definitely have the double DVD of yeah. the two of them together. Yeah, and U.S. Marshals. That's cool. But yeah, like I said, it's just I was I was thinking I um, you know I wish I had a surefire number one, but I, I there was a few others. There's a lot, honestly, when you Wikipedia it. Um, some that I might save for other movies down the road, but I knew for this one I was like, well. Let's put the fugitive on here because I remember seeing the show. I certainly saw the finale, and like I said, just to the concept that it's easily done in two dozen other shows, a cop versus criminal, and it makes a great concept. So cool! It's uh, it's one of my favorite movies of all time. I've mentioned it yeah. on another list before. Yeah. Um, my the tagline I came up with for the movie was "One man's running, another man's chasing him. Neither one's the bad guy." Yeah, and. Uh, I love the Tommy Lee Jones character, uh, Sam Gerard, and his persistence to catch mm-hmm. Harrison Ford, no matter what. We talked about the dam scene. Harrison Ford jumps off the dam. Some of the um, other deputies are just assuming that he died from the fall. And uh, Tommy Lee Jones says, I want a helicopter coming off this river. Casey pops up or whatever. And one of the deputies pulls him and is like, Sam, what are you doing? The guy's fish food. He's like, okay, get a rod, catch the fish that ate him. Yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> one of my favorite That's lines. Great. Absolutely. Movie. That's yeah. Um, but uh, to continue in movies based on TV shows, this was my number one pick as soon as the list was uh discussed. Uh the topic was discussed rather. <clears throat> um and I wouldn't have put on my list except that earlier this year I found a season of the TV show that it's based on, put it on, watched it, and I was like, this is terrific, and I see exactly all of the beats that they would take from it and put into a movie. My number one is, oops, let's get it up here. Mission Impossible. Dun, 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 right, even dun, from dun. the theme song, which they lifted from the show to put in the movie. And if if Peter Graves had returned for the movie, it could have been almost a straight line, you know, direct TV to movie. Peter Graves plays uh, Jim Phelps in the TV show for many years, and then. Uh, John Voight takes over the role for the movie. I don't think Peter Graves wanted to do the movie because it turns out like John Phelps or that uh, Jim Phelps 
would be like the villain in it. He's like, we can't do that. So they talk about that. Did you listen to the rewatchables on Mission Impossible AB? No, oh. I did. They yeah, ta- their plan was to bring the whole original <coughs> cast mm-hmm. with Tom Cruise and kill them all off in the original scene. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the, like, so there was no, um, there was no Emilio Estevez. It was all going to be Martin Landau. It was going to be that whole cast, the crew, original, crew, and they were yeah. all going to die in the opening scene. And I like mean, of natural Academy positive? Award, Martin Landau. No, I think in the, <laughs> on a mission. Yeah. On no, mission, I get it, in, but that's an old cast. Yeah, they, yeah, really they, they, they were all going to die. And this is Academy Award Martin Lando going, no effing way. Right. I'm Academy Award winner Martin Lando <laughs> right now. I'm, I'm and... going to go be in uh, the X Files movie instead. Yeah. So he, <laughs> so they kiboshed that, and then they took the character. But they talk all about that. That they tried so hard. That De Palma tried so hard to get the original cast. And yeah. then I think they acknowledge that they didn't like the Jim Phelps switch, which might be true, might be the screen time, might be the death, might be the reason they did. Hated it. Hated it. But yeah. there's that's They're that pissed. they talk about all that, that. How they tried and Lando shit all over the movie. But uh so the movie opens with what the show is very much like. Um Mission Possible TV show is not like an action super spy type movie. This is almost like a theater troupe pulling con jobs in order to get <laughs> vital information from like rogue nations or other spies rogue they nation. set up like <laughs> fake rooms and they all wear masks and uh, they uh uh trick the guy into you know giving them what they want and that scene is they open with that scene in the movie you see uh emilio estevez is watching uh, a room through his computer or whatever <clears throat> and he's watching a, a russian operative and another elderly russian man they're in a room with a dead girl on the bed and uh the elderly guys like give me a name give me a name he gives them the name they poison his drink the room opens up tom cruise pulls off the mask and reveals you know he's an agent too and we've got the information we gotta send it off and catch you know the next guy you know how good that scene is they did it in fallout two like two years ago <laughs> yeah. They just exactly. continuously do that thing. It's, it was because I rewatched because well, that's like, part of the show. The that's the big thing. Exactly. And that's part of the show. That's what yeah. they do episode for episode after episode. Episode after episode, 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 there's always like Jim Phelps pulling off the mask. And then the movie continues with Jim Phelps getting a new mission. Um, here's your team. Here's your assignment. He brings them all together. This is our assignment. And they're going to pull off the exact same thing they do all, all the time. We're going to wear masks, follow a guy. He's going <laughs> to get the information and we'll use that to. Uh, move on to his buyer until, you know, the team uh, seemingly is uh, killed off and it gets into uh, Tom Cruise on his own, which is not, you know, part of the show. This is the action movie type thing they had to do to uh, make it, you know, more relevant, relevant for like, you know, 90 cinema, I guess. <clears throat> but each movie always has an um, impossible mission to accomplish where they mm-hmm. put on a mask, <laughs> grab a guy, make him give you the information and use that, you know, against him. It's so from TV show to movie fits perfectly. I, My number I, one for sure. I, it, I was going to put one of the mission possibles. I was actually going to put fallout. Oh, because I think Fallout's the best one that they've had, but uh, yeah, mission possible. We've talked about this. I think me and Scott have talked about this, where, this is a series that is super underrated that continues to get I better. I would have put three, ever. to be honest. You could all pick a different one. You could. Like, like they're, they're all great, and great. they're all they they these continue Ghost to get better. They all is incredible. They keep up in the ante, right? Mm-hmm. Like this last uh, Fallout, they do stuff that like liter- literally professionals would refuse to do. T- Tom Cruise is out there flying helicopters on his own doing crazy shit that seasoned <laughs> professionals man. won't do like he's just not so like yeah the mission impossible movies are definitely crazy i uh, i the reason why i didn't put it on it because i i didn't watch the show a lot my parents watched the show uh so it was uh my, I think my dad really liked the show. And so I remember watching the show, but I wasn't, I can't say that I was a huge fan. So I was like, that was the one reason I didn't put on. I didn't know that you're going to put on. So I'm glad you did. But uh, same thing. I never watched the show. That's yeah. cool, though. Yeah. I remember, I definitely <laughs> remember the show because my dad, like I said, my dad watched it. But for whatever reason, I never, like, I never got into it. I never watched it, which you'd think I would because it's definitely something I would like. But I don't know. 
What would you get for number one? Yeah, bring us home, maybe. So, uh, I, I don't know. Can you guys guess what mine's going to be? Um, was Spice World a TV show? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, anybody who's watched this show or watched some of our other shows knows I'm a big fan of a certain show. In fact, I have that background that I use quite a bit. I just mm-hmm. recently got a shirt of said show. And that show is made by uh, a one Mr. David Lynch. And in 1992, he made a movie about that show I know because what, I, know, uh, I know what it is. You do? Oh, yeah. I didn't give you enough hints. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> yeah, I can't remember. I'm to lay it all out there. Uh, of course, I'm talking about Twin Peaks Fire Walk with me. Uh, t- Twin Peaks lasted two seasons. Uh, this first season is <laughs> Dynamite, and it's all about the. Uh, uh, the investigation about Laura Palmer. Uh, second season is still going on that a little bit, but they also uh, go into a different whole mystery, and they're still kind of the the thing about Laura Palmer, but they didn't wrap up, and they got canceled. And so, Fire Walk with Me is a prequel to the show, and it is all about the setup of Laura Palmer. So we have Dale Cooper there, Laura Palmer in the Black Lodge. <laughs> But this is this revolves around uh, uh, Laura Palmer's life uh, and the events that lead up to the beginning of the show. And there are a ton of ca- a ton a ton of cameos. It opens up with Chris Isaac as a uh, FBI agent, along with Kiefer Sutherland, and they are assigned to a uh, a, a case uh, that is of a killing of another girl. Um, and it kind of relates to this case as well. And we find out later why throughout the series. Uh, but then there's also, uh, this is Bob. You find out all the whole story, box story of Bob and what, what his son. And he is the, one of the creepiest characters you can possibly imagine. And has a little cameo by some guy called David Bowie. And so David <laughs> Bowie pops up and you're like, and he has a weird like uh, Southern accent. <laughs> <laughs> and it's pretty it's a weird scene but i i remember watching it and be like holy crap this is david bowie like and he just runs into a room and you're like oh my gosh this is david bowie anyway uh i i love twin peaks and so to be able to watch twin peaks on the big screen and i've seen this on the big screen once uh i would love to see it again um uh, but just to have that uh again the cinematic um uh, scope of a, a Twin Peaks movie uh, was a dream come true and it, it tied all the loose ends together. It kind of, it, I mean, it's David Lynch, so you're not going to get all of the answers. You're going to have to like figure some stuff out on your own, but you kind of figure out like, okay, who killed Laura Paul? You kind of know definitively who killed Laura Palmer, why that happened, what happened. I'm still cetera. trying to figure stuff out. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, it, <laughs> It, it it kind of wrap things up and and so it, it's 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 incredible so much so that it's a a criterion uh release which i don't have that i have it as part of the complete set of twin peaks um uh, but yeah that's my number one i love twin peaks i like me <laughs> uh, <laughs> also has that guy in it yeah <laughs> and he says one. creepy stuff it sounded creepy. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's uh, I could not. It, as soon as this topic came up, I'm like, of course it's going to be Twin Peaks Firewalk with me because I love Twin Peaks. What a list, gentlemen! That was like all over the map, but in a good way. Yeah, I like absolutely. that. Yeah. Um, I want to thank you guys for your lists, and I also want to remind the viewers to write down their lists in the comments. We like to read them. And if you agree with ours, let us know. If you disagree, let us know. If you think there are far more shows based on movies or movies based on shows, let us know that too. <clears throat> I want to remind everybody to like, share, subscribe this video. Uh, go to uh, Mac Flash Entertainment on Facebook, Mac Flash on Instagram, and on Patreon. Sign up for uh, sign up for the Patreon, and you'll get emails to exclusive trivia games and shows and stuff like that. Um, I hope you'll all come back and visit us next time on the show. We don't have a topic. (laughs) We're 
we decided maybe, not to. Maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just catching myself. I almost said something, but it may not happen exactly the way we planned. So with that, I'll say thanks for watching. Come back again next time. See you guys later.